Hello everybody and welcome to Resonance Arcade. This is our fourth show and today we're talking about weapons in games. Um, hello to everybody that's watching. Hello to Sam, Steve and Lou. Hello. 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 Good, Hi. I can hear you all. No, no catastrophes so far apart from I did actually have the stream playing back to me so that's why I could hear lots of horrible sounds in my head. So I'm sorry if anybody uh, was listening to that music then and it was all catastrophically cac it's a horrible cacophony of noise instead of Chris, lovely I serene skyrim music but anyway Chris, i don't think the stream's working <laughs> you don't think the stream's working no it's saying you're hosting mmo buff i had that i thought it was a problem uh okay sorry about that on i've got the stream on twitch here like yeah, yeah. <sighs> sorry guys yet again <laughs> another mess up there's too much technical stuff going on here <laughs> Um, well, someone someone can uh, someone can see us at least. Anyway, so um, I think I've just unhosted from uh, from the other channel. Sorry about that, people. I forgot to unhost from my MMO buff show the other day. <laughs> <sighs> one day, That's one day. Better. So yes, today's show is all about weapons, and we're going to sit and gab like we do uh, what we've done for the other shows. Um, just a quick few few reminders. Uh, there's a bit of swearing in this show, so. Just bear that in mind. If you're easily offended, then I would close it down right now. And um, also, if you guys want to ask any questions, uh, I know the chat doesn't get too busy at the moment, but if it if it does, just prefix your questions with a Q and then a colon, and we'll be able to pick them out easier and uh, and work with them. We've also got a new feature on the show today, um, which is showing you guys some footage. So even more things are going to go wrong as I do, as I show you all all of these uh, YouTube videos we've got lined up as we're talking. Um, one thing, actually, we didn't we didn't actually discuss just before we started the show. Um, we had some questions uh, from Clarky a while back. I know we mentioned them in the in the last show, but we were talking about um, we were talking about whether or not they should you know be subjects that we talk about as a as for a general show. But they, they look to me more like actual questions. So I'm not sure if we should an maybe answer them now. Um. Or yeah, we can do. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah. So there's there's two questions again. If you if anyone else has any other questions for any of us for any reason, anything at all, obviously has to be a little bit related to games, then uh, just let us know and we'll uh, we'll do our best to uh, answer them. So the first question is, um, this is for everybody. Uh, why are games so bad compared to yesterday? Am I too old? Is the market targeted at teenagers? And have I drifted away from it? Bear in mind, this part of the show isn't about weapons at the moment. We'll we'll move mm -hmm. on to that. I don't think the games are bad compared to yesterday. Neither Personally, do I. yeah, I think when I've played a lot of emulators, and when I go back to games on emulators, I actually find that there's probably not as many great games back then as there are now. I, I've. It depends on how you look at it. Again, to me, it's subjective. Um, it, it all depends on what you like as a game. I mean. Gamers of these days, you know, they might like Call of Duty games. They'll look at retro games. They'll look at even old shooters. I mean, I was uh, while we were doing some, I was doing some research for this show. I was looking at games like Kingpin um, and uh, Soldier of Fortune, which in at the time they were amazing games. Were I remember them games as well. They were big budget ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were big budget, but they look utterly terrible now. If you went back and played them, would they be the same? But there's a lot of stuff's come on. Even the control systems have moved on. You know. Yeah, I th I, th I wouldn't I wouldn't go so far as to say that it's the looks because I think there's 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 games from the Sinclair Spectrum that look fantastic, and I still think they look fantastic. I, I think good design well, is 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 not unaffected by the capabilities of the machine. There is something to say for, um, and I I don't know if I talked to Chris about these guys before the extra credits guys who do the little video lectures on, I think it's on Penny Arcade TV and YouTube about games and game design. Anyway, they did one called. Um, graphics versus aesthetics and they were sort of pointing out that a game like Zelda will age a lot better than um, I think it was Killzone 3 they'll say well the graphics on Killzone 3 are clearly superior but which one looks nicer and so that's that's <coughs> relevant from games from way back when you did like we talked about you know the early Mario Brothers games before it's from their aesthetic value those games still totally hold up mm, yeah Do you know what I mean they still look good they still look nice they're, pl they're pleasing to the eye whether yeah. they're high tech or not it's not really that, that I, I'll be honest with you, I think the, the, if we if we focus yeah if we focus on why they're so bad compared to yesterday it kind of 
it is totally, utterly subjective. I don't see any real answer to it, you know, because it's a I, bit of a loaded question, isn't it? Yeah, really? I, yeah. There's a lot to talk about with that. I can, um, I could go on, uh, go on about the the atmosphere in a game being more interesting. There's actually someone on Twitter asked exactly the same question today: graphics or aesthetics? What's impo- more important? And I responded with, again, it's you know, it's a subjective question, but I'll try and answer it objectively. To me, the atmosphere of the game yeah. is the important thing. It's not necessarily how it looks, how it plays, it's everything put together and it all kind of forms it. Yeah. Anyway, we I can't... Think the, Go on. I was going to say, I think the uh, the nostalgia element um, affects our lot. I mean, if, if you really think about it, there was some truly terrible games uh, back in the day, but because times went by, you forget these things unless you actually start trawling the internet looking for them. Uh, there's yeah. also some truly terrible games that get released every day and every week, especially with Steam Greenlight. Yeah. Is, but there's also a lot more volume of games getting released these days. Yeah, it's it's the gaming as a as an activity has changed so much though since when we were kids. Um, so I think it's definitely not worse. I think a lot of the, the the things that have affected other industries that we don't like have, have infected games as they've gotten to be bigger. Yeah, um, like we were talking about in the first episode, the prepay, you know, all that kind of marketing sort of spiel that. Uh, not developers, um, publishers do. But yeah. games as a, as a medium, I mean, I almost think it's a laughable question to say, of course they've like, come on and advance. I mean, someone was talking about making a Call of Duty movie and then someone said, oh, well, all stories in games are terrible. I was like, well, they're really, really not, especially, they're, they're not, really when you not. Compare them, especially not when you compare them to what they used to be like. It used to be, go right till the bad guys die, get, get yeah. a girl. <laughs> that was the story. And now it's like, I mean, I brought it up before, but you get a game like The Last of Us, which is about <clears throat> two characters learning to trust each other and all this kind of like deep stuff. You know, that's just not possible on the uh, NES. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a silly question. There's a lot of bad stuff, but there's no denying that. Well, as this, a medium, this question is mean? this question yeah. is specifically why a game's so bad compared to yesterday. So yeah. you're you've reversed it there. You said they're actually better than they used to be. Again, yeah, I think it's, it's a loaded question, isn't it? If it you is. ask a loaded question like that, then You've already kind of answered it yourself, I guess. Yeah. Well, I suppose we could put it to the vote. Who here you thinks that games are worse now than they used to be? Would we have a show if they were worse now? I think we're on the verge of another... I, I, I call it a second kind of gaming renaissance. Because back in the day when, you know, the, 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 the Spectrum, the Commodore, wherever you were out, it was all people making games in the bedrooms, doing it just purely for the joy and the love of it. And we're starting to get back into that now with the likes of um, st- uh, Steam, you know, um, Kickstarter. There's, there's a lot of people that are doing it just because they want to see a game out there and be able to play it. Yeah. And that's that really us- positive, I think. Yeah, that leads us actually quite nicely onto the next question as well, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, and I suppose the question. This, this question, I suppose, is for me and Lou more than anybody. Um, and we, we won't take up too much time because no. the show isn't specifically about indie dev. But this next uh, question is indie devs and the job market. How do you guys feel about indie dev? Do you start? Did you start your own company? What did you do that... Oh, hang on. Why did you do that over full-time working? I've answered this on the MMO Buff shows before. Um, I personally do indie dev in my spare time. I've been very lucky in that for the last year I've been able to do a lot more than just my spare time. But I am a spare time, you know, I'm, it's my hobby. It's something I do outside of work and I enjoy it and I get fulfillment from it as a hobby, like I do gaming. Um, I, I have started my own company. In fact, I'm using my own self employed company for it, but, you know, it's I, I still have to work full time. Not everyone's like that. Lou took some time out of work to, to start yeah. Indie Dev. Yeah, I, um, I quit my last job to, to, to try and go at it full time before realising that it's it's very hard to, to keep motivated. Um, but as to how I feel about it, the reason I got into it in the first place is just simply because the tools are there. It's easy to make games. Well, it's not easy to make games, but it's a lot easier than it used to be. It's not easy to make games. No. <laughs> I just want to say that before anyone gets the wrong impression. If, you, uh, if you've if you got any kind of... Um, if you're doing something really simple, like a tanks game or a pong game or something that's got one mechanic that does one thing and only that one thing, yes, it is fairly easy as long as you at least understand how they kind of fit together, you know? But when you want to do something more elaborate, anything with... I mean, like my game, I've, I've got three quite e- epic, like, kind of 
mechanics in there and it's taken a lot of time to even write the code for that let alone the art and the assets and everything else and then there's all the other super uh, not superfluous all the other stuff on top that's um uh, like marketing promotion recruiting uh finance management or everything else that you have to do as a company as well uh, and considering it's just you know me as the the programmer and then i've got a team of artists it's kind of you know everyone's different though that's the thing lou was doing it on his own I've, i know people who've written 3d games on their own but they've had quite a small uh, scope with it you know they've, they've constrained themselves to a corridor shooter or something that doesn't have an elaborate story or the the, the narrative doesn't have any voiceovers anyway i said i wasn't going to take too much time with that and but i just you did, did and i'm sorry <laughs> You gobby bastard. Yes. Uh, right, anyway, on to the main subject. So, as I said, we're talking about weapons. Uh, we were going to talk about weapons and tools in games, but we thought, I well, started putting tools down in the list that we've got, and believe me, the list is huge that we've got this week. Um, yeah, so I suppose we, we, we kick off with... Um, has anybody out of the list that we've made, has anyone actually got a favourite weapon that they've ever used? Yeah, the gravity gun's up there. Really? <laughs> Gravity. Yeah, man. especially especially for when the end of the game, at the end of Half-Life Two, it becomes pretty. Well, amazing. I think we probably we have we all got that in our list. I think we do, don't we? The yeah. zero point energy manipulator is it? Called? Zero see. zero point energy field manipulator. Sorry. Um, also yeah. known as a gravity gun from Half-Life Two. I think it was um it was a it was a kind of a, a bit of a game changer, wasn't it? I mean, the whole mechanic um, of Half-Life Two was that idea that you were playing around with physics yeah. um, it added such a huge dimension I mean half the Half-Life games already kind of bed themselves quite nicely into a, a realism sort of shooter but then to have it so that you're actually playing around with physics as well just adds another step to it it, it makes that immersion so much more complete the fact that you've got puzzles where you've got to you know, put um, buoyant barrels underneath um, a, a lift so that you can get over it or balance bricks on something or I mean that doesn't ne that doesn't necessarily need the, the gravity gun to do that you can pick things up in the game as well yeah. but the gravity gun allows you uh, the ability it, it's actually a, it forms part of the gameplay it forms part of the uh, you can you can just use the gravity gun for the entire game because there's so many physics based objects lying around that you can pick up and throw at enemies and that I think is is the main draw for me personally on, yeah. on the yeah. gravity gun I mean, it's interesting the way that it introduces the physics at the start of the game. Basically, a guard tells you to pick up a can. He throws a can on the floor, and you've got to pick it up and put it in the bin. And that right there is the introduction to, oh, all right, okay, so I can manipulate the objects in this world. And then when you get given the gun and you get the whole tutorial with Dog, where you've got to pass him the barrels yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. I love Dog. I loved. I wish you could control him in the game. <laughs> Did anyone else think he was going to die, like... Before the end of the game in a really tragic way. Because he's dog. Because yeah. he's all yeah. dog. All dogs die in games. It's when I read the. Um, he doesn't though, so it's cool. Have you seen yeah. that? Have you seen that website? Does the dog die? Dot com. And it's every film listed ever with a dog in it, and it's it's whether it just it's just <laughs> yes. yes or no. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's somewhat like I'm that. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, but, I was I mean, a little bit worried when I read the um, credits for Half Life Two, and it said the dog was voiced by Sean Bean. Really? So I really was. <laughs> Hang on, doesn't he? <laughs> oh right, oh, no, he fuck off. Rich. Sorry. <laughs> he doesn't even have a voice. That's what I was just saying. That's like what? Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm just. I've put the footage up that we were talking about, and uh, I'm just looking at it, the the guy car carrying around a razor blade. And I remember how fun they were. It's like not just yeah. throwing objects at people and and th but being able to throw them and cut enemies up depending yeah. on the position they're in you know and it can also act as a um, as a guard as well yeah you know you yes. could you could have something in front of you and and it you know I, something wouldn't hit you yeah, and then grab I, grenades out of the air people throw grenades at you and you'd throw them yeah. back at them with a gravity gun brilliant yeah, yeah. i think where the uh, gravity came in it was it was a bit of a game changer it was like some of that no one had seen before and it opened up um avenues for a lot of other games to continue on afterwards and kind of like copy the idea in a slightly elaborate way. I think I think they did it really well as well. It, for the for, for a first impl as I said um, last show, for a first implementation of gravity in a game, I think Half Life Two was really well. The gravity gun wasn't just you know it, the thing is with sources that the love guns don't they? they've got the portal gun and then the uh, valve rather they've got the portal gun and your uh, and your gravity gun. Yeah, well the portal gun came because uh, they 
But um, they, they took in an independent team making a game called Nabacular Drop. Yeah, I've got a video of that on my YouTube channel. Um, so that was the Proto Portal, but they basically brought them in-house, got them to make their game, but then added the whole Valve polish to it and made a story. Well, Nabacular Drop doesn't have a gun in it, though. No, it doesn't. It's it doesn't. Just it's, portals. it's just portals, but it's yeah. again, it's a it's a interesting implementation, and they did it as a, a, um, a uni project, but it, it, they formed a company from that, created the word na well, they created Nabacular Drop so they could get found in search engines, and they were found by Valve, and then they got dragged into into Valve themselves. I found that quite interesting when I found that out. It was it, they've got the it, worst it, publicity photos on the website ever though. They've got them all posing as Street Fighter characters, so they've got a Street Fighter <laughs> image and then up their heads really badly photoshopped on the top. And I, I'm sure it's really funny, but no. <laughs> Did they develop the second game as well, the same team? Um, um people probably the whole, left. All of, yeah, all of Valve basically got on the second game. It was yeah. a small team that worked on Portal and then Portal was such a success that basically they pulled Valve or the whole Valve team off everything else and said, right, let's get Portal 2 done. And that's why it's got that huge budget feel to it. It's yeah. it really put a lot of effort and money into that. Yeah. It does feel quite epic in a, in a lot of ways, which I liked a lot. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of Half Life 2, what other weapons were actually I think good all the in weapons were though? excellent. I think the, all the weapons had a real nice grounding in realism as well. Like, the even you get used to in games explosions being a certain way, like the sort of thing. And the explosions in Half-Life are like like snappy bang, and then something's hmm. something yes. screwed yeah. and fly off the screen, and you but got the kind of the the um the, the tinnitus from the, the explosion and stuff. It it makes it feel like you're actually blowing stuff up rather than throwing kind of comedy cinematic balls of um, flaming petrol at people. That actually brings brings me onto a point I wanted to talk about anyway about games uh, about weapons. When you record sounds for weapons. You can't just record. I think we actually talked about this on Friday night or Saturday night. This is uh, we Beatles. spent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, Sam. Um, I went to see both of these guys this weekend. By the way, if anyone wonders where that came from, um, both, both as in <laughs> as in the, the right hand <laughs> side of the. It's Steve connected at the hip. Like yeah. Sam and then <laughs> Steve and Lou. Sorry. All right. Whatever. No one cares. No one cares that we're friends. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. You and my mum, maybe. You know. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Oh, sounds, that was it. So weapons, if you go and record a shotgun sound or a pistol sound or an explosion sound, it's really, really difficult to make that sound sound good in a game because a pistol k -k -k doesn't sound very good when you record it. It's either way too loud and overpowers the microphone that's uh, and, and the gear that it's recording through, which you can do things about with attenuation and stuff, but generally it's it's it they just don't sound good so they have to add extra filler to them and we again we did this on uh, an MMO buff show we were talking about how how you create that sound and what kind of things you do to replace the the boom that you would expect from a weapon or a shotgun you know shotguns are surprisingly quiet unless yeah. you unless you're far away from them but in games well, and I, and I'm going to uh, talk about my favorite shotgun in a game ever and it's a the Quake 2 shotgun the the super shotgun from Quake 2 <laughs> And the reason I like that is because of how it sounds and because of how it feels uh, as a as a weapon. You know, I know we're probably moving off from Half Life here and uh, oh, another game. Just, I think it's... if you go back to it later, Half Life. But yeah, I'm shot, sure. Again. Shotguns are awesome generally. Aren't they? But what I'm going to do, I'm going to play the um, I'm going to play the clip that I've got for for the shotgun, and I want to take it, take the sound, put the sound on as well, um, just so you can see. You you guys can't see. Anyway, I can hear it. Listen to that. That that whole there's a there's a, it's just like a boom. It's again not that not particularly impressive by today's standards. You know the graphics and that, but it is a chunky weapon, isn't it? Yeah. It's big old. It's like firing a drain pipe at someone. I mean, it's yeah. just really, it feels really satisfying to go really close to someone and gib them instantly, if they haven't got any armour. Jib! <laughs> gib, jib, whatever. Good job we didn't call it jibcast or whatever we were going to call it, innit? <laughs> gib, gibcast. Yeah. I, um, I think shotguns as a weapon are really an interesting part of a lot of shoot, not just shooting games, but just games with guns in general, and how they're usually used as the second or third weapon you find that it makes you feel empowered. It's a really common thing. 
Um, Doom, I mean, not Doom, sorry. Well, I think there's one in Doom, probably. It was two, I, played, yeah. I, played, I, played, I played Quake 1 and 2. When you pick up the... Um, I think it's a double barrel shotgun in Quake, and it's the super shotgun, is it called, in Quake 2? It makes you feel like, ooh, now I can fight back. It makes you... It gives you that... I mean, Resident Evil was what I put down um, for that feeling when you've been going around with this shitty little handgun, you're like, pat, 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 uh, and then you get a, a shotgun and you're like, right, two zombies at once, boom, and off come their heads and you're like, now I feel like I've got a chance, like it makes you feel... It, it gives you the confidence that like, you know that when you're in kind of in close quarters with anyone, yeah. as Chris said, you can just turn it around and instantly turn them into sushi. Yeah, exactly. What, what, I love that. what I've got to say though That's is that... Despite the fact that we've all got fun memories of game of, of um, Quake One and Quake Two shotguns, they're actually very little used weapons. It's like, oh, I've run out of all of the stuff. I might as well get my shotgun out. In com in competition, they are. Yeah, I mean, I use the double sh the double barrel shotgun if I don't have a chain gun or exactly. A it's a backup um, weapon. In fact, if I don't yeah. have a chain gun, I prefer it over a lot of weapons. But again, it's not a long distance weapon either. But the single barrel shotgun is a long distance, more long distance anyway, medium range maybe. Yeah. But that's the interesting thing about shotguns because they have a spread. And again, that's another thing that I wanted to talk about. We, we always talk about tropes when we uh, we talk we have these shows. And one of the things that I've written down is um, uh, is that weapons that spread or weapons that have a, an odd firing pattern. Because um, there's a lot of them. I mean, you look at think game, uh, games like um, uh, Borderlands, Borderlands Two. They, they both had plenty of shotguns in them, but each shotgun was different. Some of them were like sniper rifles, you yeah. know. Some of them were ridiculous, but it all depends on the configuration of the procedural weapon, you know. There's been some bizarre spread patterns in games. In um, in the original Doom, the chain gun had a fixed pattern, and the first two shots would always hit exactly where you're pointing. So the best way to use the chain gun in Doom was to tap the fire button because then every single shot you fired would hit exactly, no matter how far away they were, it would hit them. And two so shots. Yeah. yeah. It turned the, into an um, incredibly crazily overpowered weapon if you could use it right. The single barrel shotgun in Doom as well, that had a spread which was just like a horizontal line yeah, yeah. in the distance. Good. So you could yeah. actually... Yeah, if you had a cluster of enemies very far away, it was a really useful weapon that done a lot of damage. I didn't know that. I'd, I'd hardly ever used it. Well, I used it on t apart from the pistol, you know, if I, if I only had a pistol, but... Yeah, I didn't can, realize can, that. While we're on the subject of Doom and shotguns, can we talk about the super shotgun in Doom? Yes. Could you play, oh, yes. you've got the video on it. I've got it on right now. It's, it is literally... That has to be my favourite weapon, I think. In terms of just the feel and the sound, it is like shooting someone with, with Saddam Hussein's super cannon. <laughs> it's that good. I'll play the video it's again. <laughs> so good. It's 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 like it's it's a similar thing to the Quake Two one for me. I didn't play Doom as much as you did. I mean, I did I did play it. Don't get me wrong, but I wasn't a Doom like obsessive. I was a Quake and Quake. Sorry, I was a Quake Two obsessive. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. It's got that nice satisfying boom to it, and then the nice cocking sound straight afterwards, and yeah. it's quite quick as well. You know when it's ready to shoot again immediately. Like you don't yeah. have to wait around, you know. That's another thing with a lot of weapons. Sometimes you don't know how what the fire rate's like, and it you know it takes a while to get used to it. And for an, an, a fairly early weapon, it does a lot of damage. I mean, it will basically chew through pretty much anything in the game. Yeah, yeah. It'll do huge amounts of damage, more than a rocket launcher. Um, I mean, I, I I'll be honest. I never really liked the rocket launcher in Doom when I played with it. I didn't. I, th I, I felt flimsy to me for what it was. <laughs> I never took to the uh, the Doom rocket launcher. It was hard to I think use. It, it was hard to use, and only having like a horizontal access as well, that didn't mm. really help much with it. Because the rocket launcher, obviously, you go for um, like spread damage, so you want to try and hit something near a group of people if you can't hit them directly. And that mm. was very difficult in Doom. And yeah, and, and that's actually something that um, Chris and I both will be very familiar with, which is that. You basically fire your rocket launcher at people's feet, or even better, you jump up in the air and then fire it at the feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you use the splash damage. If you miss them, you're still hitting the ground right next to them and they die. That's common in pretty much any game with a rocket launcher in it. Yeah. It's a, it's a common tactic, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Steve, you just you posted a rocket launcher um, thing, and it's about 10 <laughs> seconds long. It's no good. I know, but it's a no super <laughs> rocket launcher jump. Uh, yeah, yeah, though, it's the only one I can find. It's not a grenade jump, is it? It's just a... No, it's a dual. Ah, uh, that's the it's a double. Oh, it's the launcher. same thing yeah. though. Yeah, it's the same thing yeah. basically. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, but the <laughs> rocket, the rocket launcher in um, in its 
in itself, I I really loved when I played Quake Two. I, pl- I re- played with the rocket launcher, the super shotgun, chain gun, and um, railgun. Okay. That was pretty much it. I'd never really touched the BFG. I'd never really touched anything uh, anything else. Um, by BFG the way, took too long to wind, uh, think to wind up. The what? Sorry, it wasn't even on most maps. The BFG took too long to kind of power up. By which point, it got a rail through your face. Well. I, it, 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 was a very, it was a very cumbersome weapon. It fired slowly. It didn't do a lot of damage unless you hit someone flat on. It wasn't on most of the maps. It just it wasn't a viable weapon. One thing I liked about the rocket launcher in Quake 2 especially is I used to use it as almost like a cover weapon. If I was heading towards an, en- like an entranceway, I'd fire a rocket at the exitway type of thing in order mm. just to make sure no one was coming behind me. And, or if they did, they'd get a nice surprise. Yeah. A lot of people criticise the Quake 2 rocket launcher. Compared to the Quake 1 and Quake 3 rocket launcher, it's very slow. Yeah. It's like firing a cruise missile at someone, whereas I, the... Um... I really liked it, though. I, I thought it felt chunky again. It had a good reload rate. You knew... If you if you and someone else had a rocket launcher and you entered an arena together, you were... you were Unless someone switched to the rail, you were pretty even. <coughs> you know, it was, yeah. up to, it was up to how well you knew... How, how... It was almost like a game of chess as well, because someone fired and you knew you only had a couple of seconds until the next rocket was coming at you. Yeah, yeah. It was a very different kind of gameplay. It was with the rocket launcher in Quake Two was about damage, whereas the rocket launcher in Quake One and Quake Three was about knocking people around so that you could do more damage to them. So there was a very different, there was a very different gameplay style to them both. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, I didn't play much Quake One or Doom. So Quake One's rocket launcher is brutal. It's fast and it's damaging and it's 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 awful. It's, the rocket launcher and the the lightning gun basically is the only two weapons people use in quick right yeah yeah i've seen a lot of people use lightning gun everywhere in many videos so yeah, one thing that this um this particular uh show has taught me is that youtube is full of crap <laughs> it's yeah. got so much rubbish on there I- i've been looking for all kinds of like shots and again we're going to um we'll make a list of everybody that everyone's videos that we've used um You've probably seen the URL on the channel anyway, as I've been spannering around in there. But yeah, it's uh, we'll, we'll put them all on there for people. But yeah, it's, it's just so full of useless stuff, and it's, I, I don't even understand why people post some of the things that they post. But. Yeah, like why they feel the need as well to put the favourite song over the top of it, or tell you what they're doing while they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Limp Biscuit. <laughs> yeah, for the same. Why is it that? Uh, well, not Limp Biscuit, but Chris and I will argue about that. With you later, yeah, side, yeah. But, but why is it they always pick up something fucking awful as well? Be a song. It's always like, oh, here's what I thought about this. Here's the thirty seconds to our song. Oh, <laughs> August burns red. Some yeah, some yeah, screamo always. stuff. Yeah, yeah, always. Not saying that that's bad. It's just not to our tastes. I am saying it's bad. All right, Sam's saying it's bad, but <laughs> Sam doesn't have a reputation to hold up anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> we've kind of we've, what we've kind of covered here is that it, it's trope in itself in that the games have they'll have the machine gun they'll have the shotgun they'll have the rocket launcher FPS they'll, games will yeah yeah you look at RPGs like if you look at a uh, well you're not going to get a rocket launcher in an RPG I well, no you you will you have in fact I would consider um, I would consider what some of the uh, later tribes game not tribes um, planet side sorry I don't know why I got that in my head planet side for example I consider that a bit of an RPG because you upgrade it's your character sh- you, first, it's persistent it's, it's a first, massively multiplayer shooter isn't it really yeah but you're still upgrading your character you can become that character that's what role playing is in a classical sense isn't it yeah okay but you, would, you wouldn't see you wouldn't see Cloud from Final Fantasy firing a rocket launcher at people no you wouldn't but oh, you wouldn't see that, Zelda not Zelda you wouldn't see Link from Zelda doing it either what about Barrett yeah. What about yeah. Barrett? One of, one what of about his Barrett, Lou? What about Barrett? He's got a gun. What about Barrett? Hmm? <sighs> yeah. He's got a big Come gun. On. <laughs> and so, so does Vincent. He's a super cannon. So does Vincent. The two of them have got guns. Oh, yeah, good point. And Yuffie... No, Yuffie doesn't. No, Yuffie's got a she's throwing a star. Yuffie's just got a fucking annoying attitude on her. Fact, <laughs> That's not a weapon. Isn't one, of, um, isn't one of Barrett's like special attacks where he sort of charges his gun up and fires big an shot. explosive round off it? Big shot, so that's, yeah. That's, the, that's his first limit break. Screw yeah. you guys, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I meant like fantasy RPGs rather than steampunk. Bring it, bringing this on then. Um, in fact, let's not talk about Final Fantasy VII because we do do that a lot. Let's not do it right now. Um, no. Sam, you were a bit lost in them them quick and doom conversations. So what what weapons have you? What's your favourite? Do you think? I don't. It's really, really hard to pick a favorite one. There's, a lot of them are just based on how they look. 
And I was going to try and get an image of this, but um, are any of you familiar with the Onimusha games, which I believe were PlayStation 2 exclusive? Yeah, I love the Onimusha series. Yeah, um, so just to be uninitiated, they're like a Resident Evil style um, mechanics, so it's fixed camera angles, but it's a lot more action oriented. It's set in feudal Japan, and you basically play a guy who's picked by these Oni to um, be the one who fights off the demons, and you get given these magical weapons to do so, it's sword fighting. It's like sword fighting meets Resident Evil. It's actually really awesome. And the first one you get is uh, is an electrical blue sort of katana type sword called Ryzen, and I just loved it. Like it just looks so cool. It has like a lightning special attack, all this kind of stuff. I should have linked a video to it. Um, I've got. A, it's I've not. Got a... It's not the best weapon. I just like it. It looks cool. Like, it, I just. It's stylish, you know. I never you really got into the well, Onimushu. You? you could upgrade them. Yes, you, you could have. And you collected souls, and then you used yeah. to, you had, was it three weapons in total that you got? Three of these spirit weapons? In the first game, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got um, one, one, was just, one was lightning, one, one was fire, one was wind. It's very Japanese, isn't it? It's very, um, the, the interface. Oh, yeah. Is it done by uh, the same? Capcom. Uh, which is... Resident Evil. All that. You it's, just it's, did the whole conversation for me then. It's very much like Resident Evil. It's got the lot. same interface and look to it as uh, I'm, I said. I'm looking at Warlords now. On Emushu Warlords. Yeah, On Emushu Warlords is the first one. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, There's a lot of games that kind of follow that same uh, that same pattern, though, where you get kind of three upgradable weapons, and one's like a range one, one's more like close up power, and one's like a group weapon that you can yes. take out big groups with. <laughs> it's quite a nice dynamic. Yeah. It is, well, especially it's... when you can upgrade them, because then you can more like, well, if you're the type of person who likes to go all powerful, then you just soup up your, you know, your big powerful staff or... Mm. Yeah. And so, there's, um, uh, to be fair, again, a lot of games are like that. Look at how... Uh, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, look at how that does its weapon upgrades. You upgrade the weapons by getting new weapons, and those weapons have extra materia slots. And then by the time you... You've got the best weapon. You've got eight linked. Uh, eight is it eight per it's, weapon or six? Wasn't it uh, four banks of two links? Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. So they all. Yeah. Sorry, they're all linked in twos. Yeah. Um, but the, by the time you've got your ultimate ultimate weapon for each of them, I think all of the ultimate weapons have the same configuration and material. Yes, yeah. But then um, they, they have zero growth on them though as well, <coughs> which is annoying. So when you put material on the ultimate weapons, they don't actually grow. So you, there's, there's a certain weapon. Or I think all characters have a certain weapon which has got two slots, link slots, that causes quadruple growth or something. It's it's a lot yeah. more growth. So you'd use that weapon to get your material up, and then use your ultimate weapon which did the most damage and had the most slots. But it was, yeah, you just it was put nice. Your master it, material in there, wouldn't you? Yeah, it kind of, it kind of forced you to use other weapons, which was yeah. nice. I um. I'm, I am going to talk about one of my favourite weapons in a game ever now because we're on Final Fantasy and that's the Buster Sword just because it is so huge it is, it's a six <laughs> foot it's a six foot sword and like it's the size of it's the size of him basically and he just waves it around in the air like he's it spins it around for his, uh, his, his battle win attack the, the animation doesn't he yeah and then obviously all of his, uh, his I know it's not necessarily the buster sword that does this because he upgrades his weapon as I just said but all of the limit breaks that he does during the uh, during the the game because you have uh, I think you've got two per level haven't you and there's four levels of limit breaks four four per level I think I'll be honest I'm Is showing it? I'm showing the video of the limit breaks right now so we can we can count right. them later I'm not looking at it but yeah it's um it's a really that the, some of the some of the limit breaks are amazing though that I mean are they, are they? Do we class them weapons? Is it? Is it a, it's an attack, isn't I'd it? I'd say that's an ability. Yeah. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about that. But you asked. You're going to see it in a minute because uh, I think. Uh, if I it, it is a, a, a very iconic weapon in itself. Mm. I mean, I mean um, Ultima weapons obviously better, but I think the Buster Sword as a what the fuck like you know when you first see it it's like just a big wedge of steel. Yeah. It's just yeah. a girder with a <coughs> slice cut off the end of it. There's a, there's a place in York, Chris, that actually uh, sells a replica of it. And I'm just about to show you that place. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, or rather, I'm going to, actually, I think this might be an American place. It could be a show on TV, actually. But this is a guy, you guys can't see this yet in 30 seconds or so. This is a guy that 
has made the sword for someone at some point, but he's holding it. He's coming out of his... Uh, it's like 90 pounds or something it weighs. He's coming out of his workshop with it on his shoulder, and it's 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 just... It's, he can't even lift it, and like there's there's some examples that are coming Holy up. Shit. There's some examples coming up where he's he starts chopping things in half. He's got someone dressed <laughs> as Cloud. He's got someone dressed as Cloud chopping stuff in half, but basically there's two guys behind him giving him a hand with the sword, and he's made it of, out of aluminium as well, so it's as light as it possibly can be. Oh, Tempered aluminium or something. Here we go. This is the. Uh, he's not dressed fully as Cloud. He's just nearly as fucking the size of it. It's ridiculous. It, if you look at it in comparison, it was. It, it makes it even more large. <laughs> when you look it at it, it's like a midget. <laughs> is it meant to look all distressed like that? Because I'm sure the Buster Sword was quite clean. No, that's that'll be the tempering of the aluminium. Yeah, so it, it's you know. It's it a did so much game, swing so. that it just dropped it on the ball. It didn't. Have, they didn't have tessellation, etc., and stuff back <laughs> then. You know. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, I found that I've, I found it quite interesting. That see, here's the thing about weapons like that in games. I, I kind of like them and hate them at the same time for that very reason. That video that you just showed, because the Buster Sword and also um, Soul Edge it, from Soul Calibur Two, when specifically yeah. Nightmare has it. Now, as a thing that is going to instill fear in you, it's like, whoa, that's a fucking big sword. But it's kind of stupid because yeah, look at that. Took two guys to do that. It's like, right, you won't have a fight with that, do you? You're dead because you can't move it. Never mind swing it around your head 50 times with one hand. Like, just bring a cheese knife. Yeah, I don't know. I, I know it's not supposed to be realistic, but it, it's something that the Japanese. It's just a part of Japanese culture. You see it in a lot of anime as well of guys with this ridiculous shit on it. Yeah. It's like, you couldn't move with that on. I kind of. And sometimes I like things to be a little bit more. I, I don't know if realistic is the word I'm looking for, but. Plausible. Pla yeah, plausible, exactly. It's something a bit more plausible. Although, at the same time, I kind of like them because they're so over the top. I can't decide if I like it or dislike it. But it only really works inside the medium. As soon as you take it out of the medium and just start doing cosplay and start building the things for real, then it's just yeah. ridiculous. You just have True. to basically make stuff out of polystyrene and make it look metal. That's that's yeah. the only way yeah. that you could even possibly go. Basically. And most most cosplay ones that I've seen, they're all they're a lot well not a lot smaller, but they're they're not six foot because you couldn't get in a bloody room with them. You know, you bring it out, you're going to take half the crowd out with you. It's how you turn around, just, just be, <laughs> yeah. people over. But you, again, I mean, I've got it. I'm not a cosplayer myself, obviously, but I I do admire people who put a lot of effort into those costumes. And again, weapons are part of that. So I want talking about. So go and stay. No, I was unrelated. Talking about um, talking about melee weapons. There's there's another trope here, and that's that the melee weapons tend to be a hundred times more powerful than the best projectile weapon in a game because there has to be that payoff for getting close up to it baddies to hit them with it it's like the um the energy sword in halo 2 uh, yes. and beyond uh, it's a ridiculous weapon where actually now most of the online community uses it to fly rather than to hit people um i'm sure you've all seen sword flying yeah um have you well, not seen that chris no yeah you, you can basically attack in a certain way and it, it the, the game does this lunge animation towards the enemy, but it didn't stop doing it. You just so you just fly forward. Yeah, I just, I just realised what you were talking about. Then I actually had a video of that earlier, but you guys haven't put stuff in the uh, in the thing, so I can't show it. <laughs> but the energy sword is incredibly powerful. <coughs> I have put a powerful. video of the energy sword. Have you? Yeah. I put the energy sword, in, but not a link to it. Um. Yeah. Halo. Oh, energy sorry. Sword. I hadn't clicked next on my little search thing. Here we go. So yeah, I know I know what you mean now, and I do know the the move as well. Um, yeah, I remember it distinctly. But it's um, it I, I think I'm right in saying it's the most powerful weapon in the game, isn't it? It's more powerful than anything else that you can do to someone. Oh, it's a it's a kill, it? push a vehicle. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's I believe it's pretty much depending on what the shield is like, but it's more or less a one-hit kill for everybody, right? Mm, yeah. If I they haven't got a sword to defend with, yeah. Can you defend with a sword? Can't you can only defend a sword with a sword. I yeah, think. yeah, oh, yeah. Right. So you hit it. You hit the sword. That's that's the only defense I think. I don't think there's a block move, but you hit All you right. hit them as they hit you, and it it still does damage, but it doesn't uh, kill you, I believe. But melee weapons. I mean, if if, if any of you played chivalry, I think you have, haven't you? Most of you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's chivalry. a game based entirely around medieval sort of uh, melee weapons. So you run around with swords and maces and and morning stars and screaming. things like that. But the comedy and of that is the screaming, isn't it? It is just yeah. the, the taunts. You just keep hammering. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love it. But it's it's great when someone someone comes along with a with a, uh, a crossbow or a bow and arrow. 
and suddenly the entire server turns and I'm like, what the hell are you doing with a projectile weapon? We've all got sticks and you've got, you, you're firing arrows at us, you bastard. And they just become the center of attention. It's like everyone will kill the, the archer. Yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting. I, I, I like melee weapons in games. They're often not done well because they kind <coughs> of have to sit inside a game which is mostly projectile weapons and therefore the, the weapon has to be ridiculously overpowered and then in in some way becomes uh, a taboo to use. Yeah, the um, the berserk mode in Doom springs to mind. Yeah, yeah, it's good fun. I really We've got a video of that as well. Yeah, I really love um, I really love chivalry. Sorry, I've got the video up for that now. <laughs> Great. How much fun it is on a LAN party! It's it's so. I don't know. It's 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 really frustrating to start off with because you're like, I've just spent fifteen minutes walking to the enemy, and then I got <laughs> killed in one hit. And then it's as soon as you realise how to defend, and you realise that there's a little bit more to it than just run around and smack people, which there is if you think about it. But it's all about the weapons, isn't it? It's all about it is, yeah. it's all about well, uh, the different types and the the length of the weapon makes a difference. And I like yeah. that. I like that level of detail. What was that? Uh, that barroom uh, brawl thing in chivalry that we were. Yeah, there's, there's a map where you've got no weapons. You're going to punch each other until the heads explode, <laughs> <laughs> and this you get drunk and do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> It's literally someone's running along going, oh, winding the fist up, ready to punch you in <laughs> the head. your head just <laughs> comes away from your neck and explodes. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's very good. I like it. That's like good fun, actually. It's, it it's very, daft, very though. Laugh. It's one of those really cheap games. Oh, it was cheap. It's actually going up in price because it's getting quite popular. Um, yeah, there's a DLC called Deadliest Warrior, which I haven't played yet, where you can be samurai and stuff. Oh, man. And it's, it's, it's a piss take of the, the American TV series, yeah, yeah, Deadliest yeah, yeah. Warrior. <laughs> That'd be interesting. You should, you should give that a go, I reckon. Um, um, go on, well, uh, I was going to say, I, I probably, I think I'm the only one that's probably played this, but I've talked about the series before, but one game that really does handle its melee combat very, very well is the Soul series in Demon's Dark. Um, it feels very, very physical. It feels very weighted and chunky and like your timing matters and yeah, and the length of the weapons and a lot of stuff you were talking about is all massively important. It's it's real time combat, but it's very very tactical. Well, if you look especially at some, in multiplayer, if you look at something like um, Morrowind, it, like the earlier, in, in fact, even Skyrim's guilty of this. There's a lot of the melee combat. I love it, and I tend to prefer melee combat to the magic and the range combat. But it's you don't connect the 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 melee. It doesn't feel like you've hit someone. You, I mean, I think in Morrowind you just go straight through people. There's not even yeah. a bounce that comes back if you hit, if someone blocks. Um, but in Skyrim, I think there is a bounce. Um, but either way, it still doesn't feel. It needs to feel like it connects. It's the same as it's the same as the shotgun thing that we were talking about earlier. If it's got if it's got that sound and that feel and that uh, that level of control, you you feel like you know when you you know when, know when you can attack again and things like that. That's what makes weapons. There is there's a somewhat in, there's a somewhat intangible thing. To weapons, isn't it? What you just talked about there. There's a feel. There's a there's a sense that you're connecting and that you're doing damage. It's like a lot of um, a lot of Quake Two players didn't get away with Quake Three because the railgun turned into a laser gun. It didn't feel like you were hitting him with a slug of you depleted uranium anymore. It just felt like you were firing a, a brightly coloured laser through someone. What? Which? Sorry. What was that? Which game? The Quake Three railgun compared ah, to yes. the Quake. Two railgun. I'll be honest. A lot of the weapons in Quake Two, because they sped up the combat a, a considerable amount, because there were t everyone loved the speed of Quake Two, and then Quake Three. And oh, hang on, no, it's the other way around, isn't it? Everyone loved the yeah. speed of Quake One. They slowed it down in Quake Two, and then they sped it back up in Quake Three. And Quake Three, in my opinion, it feels flimsy. It feels like cotton wool, and that's yeah. why I never really liked and really got on with Quake Three. I imagine Quake Four's similar. Maybe I haven't played it. Um, yeah, it's similar to Quake Three, but it, there is—it's that combination of the animation, it's combination of the the effect that it has on the thing you're shooting. It's the sound. I think sound is a huge thing to yeah. play in, in weapons. Um, there's like the a lot of the flak cannon from Unreal Tournament has always been a fan favorite. It's actually topped the list of a lot of like its best weapons ever. Yeah. And I think part of why that is so good is because of the horrible flesh ripping noise it makes when you shoot someone in the face from close range. It makes this this horrible noise like 
It's well, let's, just let's listen to shredding. it. Yeah, so we recently published a list of what we consider it's to be the best guns Oh, gun someone's got a voiceover on it. Great. Cheers. <laughs> we can't listen to it because uh, you've picked Was the wrong video. Was that my video? Yes. I've got a video on it as well, Chris. That might be clean. Have you? I didn't yeah. see that. Flat cannon, flat cannon. Sam, Lou. Oh, that might have been yours, actually, Steve. That, was, that wasn't... No, no, oh. it was. It was. No, that was mine. Ah, there we go. Unreal Tournament, flat cannon. Let's have a look at that. Sorry about this, guys. We'll get better. <laughs> no, no, we won't. No, we won't. It's more entertaining like this, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, this is a more, it's a more yeah. updated version, I think. That's a no. rocket launcher. No, that's a flat cannon. Is it? Oh, 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 no, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see. It, is a, it just looks really weird. I haven't played this, that's, this particular uh, Unreal, version of Unreal that's Tournament. Me. That's what the UT3 is. Uh, Unreal 3. Uh, UT3, sorry, yeah. Uh, I've not really played that. No. But the um, the flak cannon throughout the series has been an absolutely fantastic weapon. And it's mainly because it, the Unreal series should be, by all rights, a very flimsy feeling series. But. The weapons are both interesting. They've, they've all got outfire, for instance. So there's two different ways you can use every weapon. And they're just interesting. They're not like weapons that you get in other games. Everyone has a slight tweak to it. Like the rocket launcher, you can hold down the fire button and queue up rockets mm. and then fire them all at once. Yeah. And if you tap your right button or you tap your outfire button, you can make them fire in a spiral as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, well, in fact, so we still play UT 2004 quite a lot. Or UT 99, whatever you call it. The emphasis is on mastering the weapons rather than mastering the levels or the movements. Um, and it's a really interesting step in a different direction from where first person shooters normally go. And you've so, should we, this should we have a, <laughs> should we have a quick, uh, just a quick question actually might be a good one because we were talking about it earlier. Who, you know, who prefers what, melee or ranged, personally, hmm. or what, what do you reckon? Oh, it um, completely depends on the game, I think. I, I, in most games, I actually prefer melee. In um, Deus Ex, I ran through the entire game, first of all with a baton, and then with a sword, and with the Dragon's Tooth Nano Sword. There's something very... It fits in very well with the sneaky sort of, um, you know, crawling through vents and then coming up behind a guard and smacking him around the head with something. It was more satisfying than hanging back and shooting him with a sniper rifle or a rocket launcher. It entirely depends on the game for me. Personally, I I mean, if I'm playing Skyrim, for example, I do like the melee weapons. Um, but it depends if I pick up a, a ranged weapon or a, or a magic spell that that's better or more interesting, or is better for a particular situation, I'll use it. But I don't know. I think I probably go for melee over ranged. But <coughs> quick, you know, quick. You don't melee in quick, and I love that. <laughs> if, for the likes of Skyrim, uh, Morrowind, uh, any game of that ilk, I I always go melee character. But if I'm playing something like Juice X or even um, Juice, you say what I used to say. Juice X, Deus. 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 All of us say All it differently. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> I believe it um, comes from the term Deus Ex Machina, doesn't yeah. it? It does, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it God in the machine. Go on, but, um, <laughs> if it's a more kind of modern game or a game that's actually set in the future, then I don't know. Maybe it's a psychological thing. I just prefer playing with. More modern weapons. Interesting. Yeah, I know you can, and, and I, that actually makes me think about Civ Five. Mm. Um, I know there's well, there is melee in that, but it depends on the unit entirely and where you are on the map and things like that. But you, you I remember you put a, a note in there about your death robot, which you've talked yeah, about a number of times, and I haven't seen. I wasn't sure whether or not you class that as a weapon because it's actually a unit. Well, I suppose you're using it as a weapon. Yeah, I think I, I think I'll give you that as a weapon. Yeah, I, I mean the giant death robot. Basically, you've got to get through the entire technology tree, discover uh, uranium, which is the last natural resource, then you've got to build it, which does take quite a lot of uh, production resource. But once you've built it, it can move more than most units, and it can pretty much level a city in one go. You are utterly terrible at picking videos, Steve. <laughs> uh, you, you you would be surprised how difficult it is to find videos of these things without some random German or Dutch guy shouting over it. I managed. I don't know. You didn't put it. Uh, jar nine. Ah. Sorry, oh, German people. Um, <laughs> sorry, Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the only footage I could find that wasn't spoiled. Here's the death robot, though. There we go. And he just destroyed an entire city with one shot. Mint. Yeah. I haven't seen them yet because I haven't got that far in the game, but... 
Spoilers! Last, oh, uh, man. Last game I played, I had seven of them storming over a continent. Nice. Anyway, yes, not not very interesting watching Civ for for another, <laughs> another half an hour, uh, hour and a half, is there? This um, just going back to what I was talking about with sound. There, I think sound has a lot to do with it, like a huge amount to do with it. There's a weapon that um from a game that probably only I've played on the PlayStation One called Disruptor, called the uh, AM Blaster, the Antimatter Blaster. It's basically a shotgun that you can charge up. So if you tap the fire button, it fires a single barrel. If you hold the button then it starts beeping and then releases both barrels at once but the sound is fantastic uh, and I think that and the fact that it knocks enemies back about 10 yards makes it really fun to use I think Chris is probably putting a video on now I am it is um, it's a very satisfying weapon to use I'll put the uh, I'll put the audio on as well yeah I think it needs it there's a brilliant beeping noise it's about to unleash death this reminds me of Quake, uh, of Doom. It is very, it's a Doom-like game. It's not, uh, not like uh, the looks, the feel of the, the weapon and uh, yeah, the general weapons and. But it's 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 a weapon you use all the way through the game. Uh, it's very damaged. It's very like the Doom Super Shotgun, really. But you can charge it up. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. But the sound makes so, that weapon. I think. See, that doesn't feel great. That doesn't feel boomy enough for that kind of weapon to me. It's, it's 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 not a brilliant game, but it's uh it's a brilliant weapon. It's one that sticks in my mind. Yeah. Oh, um, interesting. Still. Yeah, the sound. It's just sort of what I was talking about the shotgun as well as a as a weapon of empowerment. The the sound of the weapon is like Chris was saying with the recording. You actually listening to a gunshot being fired is not as cool as the way they make them out in games and films, which basically just lie to us as to what they sound like. This is yeah. also a very common uh, game and film trope. Of when someone unsheathes a sword, how it goes shing, shing. and you're like, yeah, so you sword you got fucked. metal. <laughs> yeah, you got metal inside your scabbard. That's a terrible idea. But yeah. it, we all associate that sound with, ooh, someone just pulled a sword out and it's going to kill someone with it. The That's other a one is uh, thing. suppressed weapons as well. Sound yes. nothing like the do. Yeah, in, yeah, totally. <laughs> in films and games, it's, it's like that weird sort of pew noise, and it's not. It, it sounds basically like a, a slightly less loud shot. Who did that version? That was a James Bond thing. Because I reckon I that's probably the yeah. first time I saw a silence weapon. It's a random. No, there's no noise like it. It's like, where the hell did they pull that noise from? Out of Sean Connery's bubble. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Well, um, got you the know sound. What? Um, oh, go sorry. on. I was going to. I was going to oh. move on, but go on, Steve. I was going to say, uh, one game that I remember had a really good sound and a really good feel. Uh, was the laser pistol from another world, mm. and that looked oh, uh, fantastic is that the, as well. Is that the what's his name? Eric Shahi two D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh, you could. Um, it, it was one weapon that had uh, three uses. You could fire a laser beam. You could charge the laser beam up to make a big laser shot that go that take down a shield or go through a door, or you could actually generate a shield with it yourself. Yeah. There was only one fire button. This the controls were so simplistic, but just the, the aesthetics of the whole thing really uh, set it off and it was one of my favourite games for the Amiga. That looks fantastic that game. I saw a playthrough of I think the SNES version of that and that's one of those games, that guy in general I can't remember pronounce his name, Eric Shahi is it? I'm probably getting that. Like that yeah. Yeah. Sorry whoever you are because you're a great <laughs> designer um, but hit, um, yeah that game is beautiful as well the way it looks and everything, the animation is, is incredible, it still looks great today as well. The, uh, they released a HD remake of it uh, a few years ago and they're also yeah, doing flashback it. now. It's actually yeah, out, yeah. Uh, the demo. I've got the demo, but I haven't yeah. played it yet. Fl flashback is unrelated to uh, another world. It's related in terms of it's a spiritual successor. It's, it's the it same wasn't... guy, isn't it? Same. I don't think it is. I don't think it was the same guy who did it. It was definitely related in some way. A lot of people bundle it into the same thing, but I don't think it actually has anything to do with. Um, okay, well, there was something. Yeah. Even if if it, if it isn't the same developers, then there was something when it came out that was very that there was it was very related to it. I remember flashback coming out after it, and I remember the the hype surrounding it. Yeah, I think it was just because it was a, a, the same type of game, and people were waiting for another sequel to another world, another another world. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he definitely did work on one called Heart of Darkness, um, which is on the PlayStation One, which is that very another world look, but it's a little kid um, going on an oh, adventure. Oh, I think I remember world. that actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, 
for a game that starts like a like a twelve year old boy, that game is brutal as well. <laughs> Not to do weapons though. Sorry. I, I think there's a recurring theme here. I think, and we're talking about obviously different weapons for different situations. But I think the sound makes more more of an impact on me than anything, and I think that that is. I mean, a weapon can even be underpowered, but if it sounds nice, it sounds good to me. I'm probably keep using it. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I, can you think of an example of that? An underpowered weapon with a good sound. <sighs> Not the club. <clears throat> oh my god, that actually does have a good sound. It's What's it, that? in fact the club in um, in Goldeneye. <laughs> Goldeneye. Club. Hang on. <laughs> oh Worst my god! god. It, it's one of my. It's one of my. It's one of the world's most terrible weapons ever. I don't think I can play the sound on this clip because I think it's got some dudes squirming over it. But um, oh, I'll show you the. Uh, I'll show you the club. It is like the world's most inaccurate, underpowered weapon ever. Everybody hated it. You got it on the snow level. I can't remember. It was the bunker. How you came out of the bunker and you were on the snow. Um, yeah. And you, you, it was you could jill wield them, and everyone was like, "Oh, if you jill wield them, they're all right." Nah, they're not. Nah, they're not. Especially with that, it, what pretends to be an analog stick on the the C sixty four. It's like <laughs> it, it kind of you, you're doing that, and there's the hole. There's a hole in the middle that just doesn't hit anybody. So when you aim directly at someone, it shoots to the side of them. When you aim to the right of them, it shoots to the side of them a little bit, and then kind of flaps all. Oh, it's terrible. Do you not remember it, you guys? Do you not play it? I did not hardly play it. Played it. I got a Nintendo 64 well after it had gone out God, of fashion. You, I'm going to say you guys are you missed out. That was a whole. It was a whole experience Same. in itself. Yeah. Goldeneye. I mean, it was. It was at the time. It was like, wow, this is on a console. You know, it's the the levels had a feel to them. This is a, one thing that we kind of briefly discussed <laughs> in the level thing. The levels had a feel to them that were. It just felt really cool. I don't know. I can't even explain it. Everything felt new and fresh. You know. For its time, definitely for its time. But also on uh, on the Goldeneye thing, one of my favourite weapons in Goldeneye was the PS um, PSG ninety, I think it was. Uh, Sniper rifle, would that be? No, not PSG. It's PS ninety, maybe. Oh, the RCP ninety. RCP. The, there we go. The RCP. Machine gun. Yeah. I've got a I've got a example of it here. You could dual wield those as well. That was you could dual wield, yeah everything. In that not, is that the big the black one with the red red, red laser yes. on it? Right, it's a P ninety then, isn't it? It's a P P ninety rip off. Uh, yeah, P90. they're all they're all rip offs of real guns, aren't they? They're yeah. all called something slightly different. Yeah, the P ninety is the kind of uh, the the big square gun with the red laser dot on the top of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it has a laser dot in the game, but it, it looks like it. The design is the same. It's quite a it's a unique looking gun. I've I've forgotten to get footage for the RCP ninety, unfortunately, but I do have footage for another uh, another one that uh, that was in Goldeneye called the Golden Gun, which um, is a particularly annoying weapon because it's one of those that turned like a multiplayer match the instant you you play you someone got it because it was a one shot kill. Um, I'm showing it now, and whoever got the Golden Gun, it, it shows up on everyone's screen or everyone's half of the screen. Blah blah has the has the Golden Gun, and then. That's it. You know, you know that, especially if some some of your friends got it, who were particularly good at shooting it, because it had auto aim on as well. Because again, it was a console, so <laughs> you'd auto aim, shoot someone, and it doesn't matter where you shot them; they were dead instantly. Um, but it had a reasonably slow rate of fire, and you could kill someone if you kept running around and spanning around enough. You could <laughs> like, you could kill them. It wasn't How easy. How do we feel about super weapons then? Because this is this is an example of a super weapon, isn't this? Is this is on Quake Two servers? An army turned the BFT off because it was a super weapon and because they felt it was cheap, and whoever got it would change the match, the tide of the match straight away. Has there ever been a good super weapon? I can't really think of one. I yes, can think of I, ones. I can. Uh, yes. Who goes <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. first? Um, uh, my my favourite super weapon is the Redeemer in Unreal Tournament. Because even though that is a super <laughs> weapon, it's still quite localized. Do you remember it? It yeah, it takes a bit of skill. It can be shot out of the sky, can't it? Yeah, yeah, it was quite vulnerable when it was in flight. Do you know which one we're about, Sam? I no. <laughs> it was basically a rocket uh, that you fired at people, where you could fly the rocket yourself. So you were looking out the front of the rocket and uh, oh! see what you ramped. I've heard of it actually. Yeah. yeah. That sounds so I had a normal firing where you just fired it straight at someone, and an alt fire where you could steer it around and fly it around corners and stuff. But you could be shot while you were steering it, and the the 
the Redeemer could be shot out of the sky and it would just explode harmlessly. But it wouldn't... I didn't think it was too catastrophic, though, when it hit. I mean, it, it blew everything up in the local radius, but it didn't... There it it is. wasn't huge like the, the BFG, you know? The BFG, yeah. everyone on your screen was dead. And that's an interesting point for a super weapon. It was very interesting how the BFG worked. Yeah, I mean, I could go into... I could probably do, deliver a lecture on how the BFGs have worked in various id games, but I'm not going to do that. But they are interesting weapons. I think what... I don't really like super weapons is uh, a general rule but there is a very cool weapon from supreme commander called the mirror which is basically right. a mass i've got a video of it up there as well it's basically a massive artillery cannon it can hit anything anywhere on the map and it does a, a shitload of damage and it looks cool it looks like a huge phallic symbol like a railroad gun it's it's a uh, uh, you'll oh, see like, yeah, I can see. I can up. see the phallicism. <laughs> yeah, it actually when when it when it deploys, it starts off like it just looks like a building, and this massive turret starts to come out of it, and just keeps extending, extending. <laughs> like some, it's <laughs> really ridiculous slow border. and uh, ominous, isn't it? Look at it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's hilarious, but it's such a powerful weapon. But it it's it, it's you basically, <laughs> if you're in a position to be able to build it, you've already won the game. Right, right. Because you need so many resources and so it takes so long to do. But it's it's hilarious for that reason. But it's nice as a super weapon because because of that fact. It's not cheap. It's really, really you've got to take a massive gamble and put loads of resource into it yeah. when you could easily finish the game another way. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't spoil the game. The, that reminds like me of that reminds me of um, a game called uh, when I'm looking at Supreme Commander. It looks like. Uh, Metal Marines on the NES or the SNES, I think it was a SNES, and that was like a it was a unit based game. You had to like build areas. I might I might try and have a look for a video actually see if it's there. But the, again, the weapons in that there was super weapons in that, but you had to get really really good at the game to actually get them. You know, they, they were a reward for becoming proficient. You know, yeah. Supreme uh, Commander has got a really good balance of that, and basically you've got the three different tech levels. And then you've got the experimental tech level, which is like all these huge robots and, and tanks and artillery cannons and flying uh, gun, like massive beetle-shaped gunships and stuff. But they're all very hard to build, and basically the arms race kicks off. If someone starts to build that, then you've got to have the intel to know to build it yourself. And it, the, the game, it, they're, never, they're never game enders, or they're very rarely game enders. Uh, they just add an extra level of oh my god, this is a massive battle, and now as well as a billion units going over there, you've got this huge robot, which is basically picking him up with his hands and sucking him into his hands and destroying them. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at the Metal Marines thing now. It's uh, It was basically you built units, and ev all of your base was underground. Um, but you had to build ballistic missiles to, to attack your enemies. I think there was a multiplayer version of it as well, I'll be honest. I can't remember. I've got it downstairs. One of the few SNES games that I've still... Uh, I've st you know, still got, or I never lent out, so I never lost <laughs> with my friends. But yeah, there was uh, you could you could re upgrade. See them robots there uh, again. You guys probably can't see them yet, but they're cut, they're the metal marines, and you had to upgrade them um, as you went through the game. And uh, they, when you get them to the like the, the top level, they were they were just impossible to kill, and you could just send them off and destroy entire families. Entire you don't families. Want anything that, that removes any element of. Work or skill, like a super weapon that you pick, like the golden gun, doesn't really take much skill to use. So it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's cheap, isn't it? It's sort of cheating. Yeah. It takes skill to learn where it is and how often it spawns when you play yes. multiplayer. But that's it. That's, that's I mean, it. it's the same with the BFG though. But then again, the BFG was one of those that you could easily, if you were good enough, you could avoid it and you could, uh, you could, if you were firing it, you could easily just miss everybody. You know, yeah. again, if you it's didn't know weapon, how it works. The BFG is a weapon that takes some skill, and I think that's probably the distinction that I should make, is that the weapons that are cheap are never fun, at least not when you're on the receiving end of them. Um, but weapons that require some some skill to use, and certainly when there's when there's like a, an elongated period of skill, like learning to use a weapon skillfully, like a lot of the weapons in Unreal tournaments, it makes them very really, um, satisfying. Especially when there's good counters of those weapons as well. Yeah. So, as far as like super weapons go, then I mean, what's everyone's thoughts on you know things like um, yeah, the Hammer of Dawn? Oh, the Hammer of Dawn. That I, that that's a brilliant weapon. 
I think it's fantastic. It's well balanced because, yes, it can kill people instantly, but you've got to charge it. Everyone can see you charging it, and it means you're very vulnerable. The Hammer of Dawn is from Ge of Gears of War, by the way, if anybody is not aware. Um, it's it's a it's a weapon that you aim, and then you fire. It takes a little, as, as Steve just said, it takes a little bit to charge, and then it just rains destruction on, every, on, on the local area again. But yet again, it's quite slow, so if you fired it, charged it up, and you you can move it around. I think there might there might be a video somewhere. I'm not sure. I've got a video of a multiplayer match using it. Cool. Can I just say that that BFG that you put on um, is not the original BFG? No, it <laughs> does, doesn't look like it. <laughs> it's uh, it was quite difficult to find the original BFG. I am. Uh, I've I've decided that Steve's do. not doing videos from now on. <laughs> just last sure minute, that. I only got back yesterday. <laughs> I'll let you off. I'll let you off this week. Anyway, it's our first time showing videos, so um, yeah. what no, were we're you just about to go? Uh, the Pillar of Dawn video is quite good, though. Uh, pillar of it's not Pillar. Uh, Hammer of Dawn. Hammer. Sorry. I'm thinking of uh, Halo. Pillar yeah, of Dawn. I, pillar of Autumn. The, the hammer. In fact, the whole. I think every weapon in Gears of War is a v is very well implemented, and they're very fun to play multiplayer again. Um, oh, I'm just watching a Cyber Demon get the crap kicked out of it. Sorry. Right, so this is the Hammer of Dawn. Um. Uh, the, um, uh, the Here we uh, go. Uh, the Lancer from Gears of Wars as well. It was a fantastic weapon. The uh, one with the chainsaw built into it. Yeah, the Lancer or chain gun. Yeah, I was um, chainsaw gun rather. Um, yeah, we're watching, we're watching the, the Hammer of Dawn now and you can see when he when he charges it up, it kind of moves it moves around slowly behind where his reticle reticule is, which makes it it makes it easier to avoid as well. Mm. I, I liked it. I I really liked it, and it's one of those coveted weapons that everyone on the map wanted, you know, if if he could see it. Anyway. Um Thorno in chat has just mentioned the um Unreal Tournament Chaos mod. Um there's some of the weapons in that. Now, I've played Chaos in quite a few different games in Quake 2 and stuff, and that had some hilarious weapons. It had one called the um, the Vortex. I think it had a, pro a fuller name, but it was known as a Vortex. Basically, it was a grenade you threw. It landed in the middle of the level, and then everything on the level just started spinning around and getting destroyed, including weapons on the ground. So pickups and stuff would start orbiting this horrible, spinning <laughs> Vortex of Doom. It was really good fun, and there was lots of cool weapons in that. There was grenades which would uh, which would follow people around, chase after them and kill them. Yeah, I, It I, all sounds a little bit passe now, but, but at the time there were some excellent weapons that. That had uh, some good melee weapons as well. It had a big sword in it, a big claymore. That was good fun. I like the... Um, we've already talked about this weapon, but at the end of Half-Life 2, when all your weapons get vaporised, basically, and then the gravity gun, uh, you're in that room and you're going up the... I can't remember what the big tower's called at the end of the game. But all your weapons get destroyed, and all you have is gravity gun. But the gravity gun doesn't get destroyed; it gets upgraded, yeah. and it turns blue. Oh yeah! And then it basically it's becomes the it just kills everything in one go. Like you can pick up a guard in it, carry him, and you'll fight him, and he'll electrocute other guards and kill them <laughs> and disintegrate himself. It became so like cool. Yeah, and that it, is a really good. And the way it's introduced as well, I love the fact that it's basically glitched. Like, yeah. it wasn't ready for this weapon and it just dropped it on the floor and turned it into some insane weapon. I love that. And it doesn't, it doesn't even try and explain it. I love the fact that it doesn't put a cutscene in where Spreen suddenly goes, Oh no, you've got a super gravity gun. Yeah. It just that would have ruined it's it turned it blue that. and it's brilliant. Yeah, basically, that's all you need to know. And that, it's so much, that end bit of that game, it could have been so wet and, and disappointing, but it really, really wasn't. It was like, it was a bit of like a. Uh, for about an hour of just that, <laughs> I, I still can't remember what happens at the end. I still, it's still, I'm still drawing a blank. I should have put a video because I put the original video when he's going through Raven Home, but the bit at the end where you've got the super gravity gun, it's amazing. That's kind of why I like it so much, just for the ending more than actually all the physics stuff, which is cool. And it's it, it's an interesting example because it's it's a tool and a weapon. That's what it's one of the things that makes it so cool and interesting. Yeah. And I want to lead on to something else. Going back, like scaling it back from super weapons, but another weapon that I really like, and a game series that I really like for weapons in general, the Ratchet and Clank series. Yeah, you, you've talked about that a lot to me, and I've never, ever, ever played it or seen any footage. And I think I've linked in some footage of, of Ratchet and his Omni Wrench, which is his basically his his standard wrench that he runs around kicking the shit out of everything with, but he uses it as a tool to do all the stuff as well, and it's 
you've got the same wrench throughout all the game series and it's always really satisfying and fun to use. You just whack things with it and use it as a tool. Um, it's just really, it's like your little companion that goes with you everywhere you go, that wrench is really... I think the thing the that... weapons are great in that those games in general, really imaginative and funny and, and inventive. Looks like he's got tools in it as well, like grappling guns and things like that. Yeah, you've got loads of gadgets. It's very gadgety weapon. It's sci-fi. You're a little, you're a little space cat thing that runs around <laughs> in a spaceship on different planets, killing monsters. You see, and having it, adventures. <laughs> it looks too. It looks too much like it, it looks like a cross between Crash Bandicoot and somewhat like Banjo and Kazooie to me. And again, I've played a lot of those kind of games over over my gaming it's, life. That's not an entirely inaccurate. Um, Comparison, but I don't see that as a bad thing. No, right? no, no, I didn't say it was. I'm just saying that again. It's it's saturation, isn't it? I mean, as a as a Nintendo kid, I used to play this kind of stuff all the time. That was that was the staple, especially when it got to the N64 stage. I thought there was a there's a tenuous link. You know, Disruptor that I uh, mentioned earlier on. Mm -hmm. It's made by the same company, Insomniac. All right, interesting. So, all right. Some, so maybe that's why it's got great weapons in it. <laughs> They're an interested developer, and they do have a good. Knack for making print weapons <laughs> got to be said. They're currently <laughs> working on a Sunset Overdrive, which is a kind of Borderlands style game that a lot of people are hyping up, and that's got quite good weapons in it as well, apparently. Yes. I think weapons that you craft, or it might be, might not be true, but I think there's weapon crafting in that game, mm. possibly, which uh, should be interesting. Um, I want to mention one, and this is this is because this game didn't get much press or didn't get much. Um, Interest at the time, but it's a, a weapon that takes particular skill to master, um, and it's the disc launcher or the spin fuser in uh, Tribes. I, I again, I love Tribes. I've talked about it before. You two, Steve and Lou, played with me, but not you weren't as big on it as I was. I was in a clan mm. and like all kinds of stuff with it. I was in IC, whatever that stood for. Um, anyway, the disc launcher was kind of. I'll, I'll show you it. Um, it was. It, it was, was a, a rocket launcher, launcher, basically. Well, it was a rocket launcher, basically, wasn't it? To all intents and purposes, it was a rocket launcher. Uh, yes and no, to, to a level, because it seemed to... Um, let me try and get this full screen. This has got some kind of mod on it, so sorry for the purists out there. But, but the spin Can you fuser, talk about my videos? Uh, this isn't mine, this is Lou's, I think. This is Lou's. Yeah. Um, anyway, either way, it doesn't matter. Well, uh, so He's actually got a, a, a reticle on there that helps him aim. As well, which is a bit cheaty, I think, but it was it was particular skill because you could shoot people in midair. If you ever got a mid midair shot, it was like everybody, everybody on the server. I've just got a midair shot with a spin fuser. It's amazing, you know. It was, in, <laughs> in the most recent tribes game, um, when you hit someone in midair, you actually get like a cha ching noise. It's brilliant. Right. It makes it feel even better. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's a money shot. Yeah. One thing I found about the spin fuser is that like to fire it actually felt quite flimsy. Yeah, it, didn't it did. Feel yeah. like a big gun. It well, was like a little poof when you fired it off. Most of them, though, most of the the, the I wouldn't I wouldn't say that Tribes was great for the weapons, the feel and everything, but the the game itself and the amount of skill it took to master the weapons. Mm. That's what that's what the draw was for me in this instance. And I do like the sound of the spin fuser as well, because if you see when he's shooting now, it's like it's. You can aim at a particular spot, but it won't always hit that spot. It depends on how fast you move in, and yeah, yeah, yeah that that was the the main thing about tribes was the the inertia that affected the weapons. So you could actually kind of add uh, direction to the weapons by how fast you were moving. Yeah, exactly, and it wasn't it just took, a case took that of into account. yeah, it wasn't just a case of like shoot that area. That's where it's going to hit. And I think because because tribes was such an open game, it made the because I know you're talking about the the weapon feeling slightly flimsy, but it was also on these huge maps as well, and it was hard to hit people. You spent most of the game different. in tribes just getting to the other side of the map and chasing people. Oh, there's another thing I just noticed as well. I just remembered um, the spin fuser jump as well, or the yeah. the acceleration. Because again, to people who didn't play tribes, tribes was it was, a, it was mainly multiplayer. There was a single player <laughs> campaign in it, but it wasn't you know it wasn't anything to shout about. Um, but the when you there was a bug in the game there was a physics bug where you could you could hit the downside of a, a, a cliff or something and you could ski down the cliff they subsequently in previous in, in other tribes games they added it in as a function i didn't like that i like this is the emergent gameplay that you talked about the fact that you could use this this skiing and you could use the spin fuser to speed up your skiing and you could 
tap jump loads of times to speed up the skiing and hit things at exactly the right angle. That was the skill that was involved in the game and that's why people played it, I think, mostly. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't intended. And then when they've, they've, they've added a ski button that you hold down in Tribes 2 and, it, and, and in Tribes... Tribes Ascend, I think they've got one as well. Yeah. But they've also got other things in those games, like they've got like grappling hooks and things like that, which add an extra element of skill because you could you could fire the grapple, you could ski down a hill, fire a grappling hook at a column, swing right around the column, and then fly back off on the other direction. That was, uh, that was Tribes Vengeance. Tribes really? Vengeance, yeah. I yeah. loved that, and I'm, I wish I wish I'd played it multiplayer more, you know, because it, it died by then. I think the Tribes Online scene. Mm. Uh, you still go on a server occasion. I still go on a server occasionally and see loads of people um, playing it, but only on one server out of the hundreds that are up there. You know, it's it's got a certain love. It doesn't look great, but yeah, it's it is what it is. You know. <clears throat> Should we talk a bit about some of the weapons in RPGs? I know we've got stuff like uh, like uh, Zelda and Skyrim and even um, Bioshock. Some of the the more RPG-ish we sort of weapon stroke abilities in there. Right. Interestingly, the, the Master Sword from Zelda is really not an RPG weapon at all because you can't scale it. It doesn't improve. It just, it's just the standard issue. You are now the hero, Link. You can you yeah, can upgrade it. In some of the games, you can upgrade it to a fire version or an ice version. Or um, can you? Uh, you? Could you not in in Link's Awakening? No, hang on. What's what's the one that's on the screen now? God damn it. Link to the past. That's it. A link to the past. I thought in that one you could upgrade it with something. Uh, I'll tell you I what. I'll tell you what. There, there's a game that, that Steve will know about called uh, Crusaders of Senti or uh, Soleil, which was basically Zelda with the entire mechanic of the game was upgradable weapons. Right. Uh, Steve, do you want to talk about? Yeah. Um, story aside, uh, the way that you upgraded your weapons is you actually befriended lots of animals. And these animals range from like cats, dogs to platypus, you know, uh, phoenixes. <laughs> no, seriously, and you could equip two of these animals to form a different combination to give you a weapon effect. If you got the butterfly, for example, it allowed you to be able to. Uh, oh, sorry, it was, it was a butterfly, and I forget which animal allowed you to throw your sword. Well, if you had them two, then you could throw it and control it around the screen. You can make it fire, you can make it ice, you could make it go really fast just by changing the combination of animals that you had in your party. The, we're talking about, I mean, I looked through quite a few um, top 10 lists or top 100 lists of best and worst weapons while I was I was doing my research. Because, you know, often at times you forget, don't you, what games you've played and which weapons were good. Yeah. And So you have to remind yourself, regardless of how knowledgeable you are. Um, the Master Sword is always in those lists. And the, the, I'm talking about Zelda still, sorry. The Master Sword's always in those lists, and it's... It's not very good, is it really? <laughs> I mean, it's not as a weapon as, as far as weapons go. Why is it always in a top ten list? It's iconic. It's, it's, it's a memorable weapon. I mean, yeah, I, yeah you, you know I, it. Other games, don't get me wrong, but I mean, that's ju it's just your standard melee weapon. You know, you have it all the time. You, you said as you said, you don't really upgrade it. There is, I think, I think there's there's spells you can cast on it or something. I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, it just just it just. It's weird that it's in that. It's always in those lists to me. It's. It. I only put it in mind just because it's such a recognizable and iconic thing that you associate with that franchise as a whole. You know, the same way that. Um, oh, do you know what? I try to think of another one that does that. I'm totally drawing a blank. That's probably why it's so good because you think of the Master Sword goes hand in hand with Zelda and all that. The Sword of a the Thousand Truths. Crowbar. <laughs> Crowbar. In the, the, um, oh, half yeah. Half -life. It's no, but you've got loads of other weapons in that. You do, but, but the, like, people remember the the crowbar really well, even though it's not yeah. a very good weapon. That's because it's 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 got interesting sounds surrounding it. I think <laughs> it, it's it's interesting. I wouldn't dum, even dum, say dum, they're dum, particularly dum. good, but it's, it's interesting, interesting the way sounds. that the, the Gordon Freeman is somehow able to hit things at like five hundred hertz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, um, uh, do you want to talk about Wabajack from um? Skyrim. Uh, which one of us? A, uh, <laughs> We've all probably used it and played with it. I've, I've not used it, but I watched no? the video and I was laughing. I was laughing my ass off. Oh, it. I can't believe you haven't used it. It's something that you would love. You, it, it, as someone who runs around games and breaks things, that's what Wabajack does, basically. That's the one you get from Shea Gorath, isn't it? Uh, you get it from yeah. one of the 
yeah, one of the um, the, the prankster Daedric Prince. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you pronounce it? Shagor, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just the guy just turns into a chicken. Someone else just turned into a crab. Um, <laughs> someone's probably going to turn into like cheese in a minute. Unfortunately, I don't think anyone does turn to cheese in the wine. video that I was watching. <laughs> Someone turns into is... wine. <laughs> <laughs> and it's then so, uh, it's it... such a weird weapon for Skyrim, because Skyrim takes itself quite seriously most of the time, doesn't it? Um, yeah, there's a bit of black comedy <laughs> in it, but... Yeah, and it's kind of like, again, Skyrim's one of those games where you can make your own comedy, like... It, I think it's just more true. Around this town. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already discussed that at length, haven't we? Let's not go there again. <laughs> But I meant you can you can be a bit of a, a bit of a, a naughty boy, shall we say, and just do things to NPCs that are funny. Sleep <laughs> it <bit of> that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching this, this Robert Jack video. There's people just exploding, disappearing into other dimensions, turning into horses. But a horse just turned into a Daedric prince. Oh no, I don't know. Somewhat, ah, whatever. Anyway, turn goats into dead goats. Brilliant. Right. Anyway. <laughs> Isn't that what most weapons do? Possibly a bit <laughs> distracting these <laughs> videos. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Plasmids? Well, you know, yeah, well, yeah, plasmids. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How many of you have played? I mean, no, no, Sam has. Sam's played Bioshock. I played a bit of it. I played enough to know what the plasmids are. Well, there's a few things with, with Bioshock um, to do with the weapons that I, I kind of want to talk about. Um... It's got such a variation and such a, a wide range of ways to kill people, but it's so... I mean, I played it on hard again, so this is probably a repercussion of that. It's so restrictive in terms of what you can and can't use throughout the game. It's very... Uh, the ammo is very sparse, you know? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got... I mean, I'll, I'll put the plasmids up now. Uh, in fact, there's quite a lot of you have put different types of plasmids in here. I just put in a general, like, plasmids video. <clears throat> which I'll show you now. Um, but I like the fact that in Bioshock 2 you could combine your plasmids with your weapon. The first game you couldn't do that, could you? You you could combine it with your weapon, but you couldn't use them both simultaneously. You had to get to plasmid with your left hand and weapon with your right. So if you had Electro Bolt equipped, your weapon went away off the screen, and then when you fired it, you could pull the magnum out again and then whatever, but... It wasn't the same, whereas in Bioshock 2, both hands were present, and you could use them both simultaneously. Yeah, that, that was the thing that... You know, I mean, that's what makes Bioshock 2 a little bit better than 1, in, for my, my eyes. Again, it's 6 and 2 threes with it, though, and Bioshock's such a great game for its story and all kinds of other things in it. But Yeah, I didn't enjoy the second... The second one, I really enjoyed it, and then didn't... I started playing through it a second time and found myself finding it a bit dull somehow. Yeah. The, the, first, the first game is very replayable to me. I don't know why that is. It was the second story, one? I, well, uh, the one where you played a big daddy? Yeah. 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 But you also play the big daddy at the end of the first one, very briefly. You turn yeah. into a big Spoilers! daddy. Spoilers! Sorry. <laughs> but that, everyone, again, Bioshock 2004 or something. Anyone who cares would have played it by now. Yeah, and they wouldn't be watching us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean... There's also, as well, there's one of them that I've put uh, another weapon in Bioshock that I've put on my list as one of my one of the worst um, ever, and that actually comes up in a lot of worst ever weapon lists too. And it's the chemical burner in the first one, I think it is. Let me try and find that. Hang on. I don't get what's so bad about that. The, well, the reason that it's bad, or the, the reason that people give for it being bad, and I totally and hundred percent agree with it, is that it it's just plasmids in a weapon form. It's yeah. it's your. I'm trying to find it now. Sorry, but um, it causes more damage than the plasmids on their own, though, because it's sustained fire. Like if you fire electro gel at something consistently, then you're going to do it in a lot faster than using an electro bolt seven times on it. Would. Well, not necessarily because you can use a plasmid and then a shotgun, and you do just as much damage as yeah. a chemical thrower. Um, sure. But yeah, there's something about the chemical thrower that's. Uh, People don't like because of because of that. That's I think that's the main reason for it. It's like right, okay, you can use it to light people on fire. Cool. Oh, but I can also fire uh, ice out of it. And uh, what's the other one? Ice and ice, electricity, and electricity. And... That's it. Shock. Yeah. Yeah. Shock gel because it wasn't actually. You shoot gel out of it, and then that does has an effect, doesn't it? Is it in the first is, one? It's in the first not game, hair gel. It? 
<laughs> I'd never used it, I'll be honest with you. I didn't I need used it. used it on the last boss. Oh. Quite handy then, because you've got loads of ammo for it. It's not the best weapon in the game, but I didn't detest it or anything. Yeah. Like, the crossbow was the best weapon in that game, as, in a, as a weapon weapon for me. I don't remember many of the weapons in the game, I'll be honest. But nothing stands out to me, apart from this chemical thrower. I just remember cross- struggling like hell to find ammo for everything. Yeah, that's, yeah. That was my, that was my, that's probably why I stopped playing it, because I was getting frustrated with the fact that the Big Daddy fights basically used all the ammo on the entire level, and more. Yeah. And there wasn't enough ammo to go around, so... You could buy ammo from the vendors. Yeah, it just, it just felt like it, it, was, it, was, it was holding back on me. It was micromanaging. Basically, yeah. and 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 that it is, it is that kind of game because it's in it. Remember, it's in a dystopia, isn't it, <clears throat> or a utopia that's turned into a dystopia, and it's it's not populated anymore. It's just splicers and big daddies and little sisters, and that's it. There's nothing else in but that world. You had to you had to sort of make a uh, with the big daddy fights. You had to do it in the right place, and you had to make a kill zone. Like you had to know how you were going to attack them and have a place to run away to and and do it like that, which is why the crossbow is really good. Now, if you remember, the crossbow, one of its, you know, old fire functions was the trap bolt. So you fire the crossbow bolt into the wall and it shoots an electrical line to another wall that is basically, you can set up a string of these, like, you know, five in a row, you know, like this, and shoot loads of them, and then just shoot a big daddy and watch him run through. And he'll, you can, if you've got enough of those bolts, you can just kill him with one of those. And then maybe shoot with a shotgun a couple of times, and you can set up, or you can at least set up traps and stuff so that you can lead him through and do things like that. Uh, maybe I, you have to play that again. <clears throat> it, it's, the, the, all three games are a brilliant experience, and I would I'd highly recommend them to anybody for the story alone, let alone the gameplay. But if you really, really, really don't want to deal with the the weapons, just play it on easy uh, with the ammo. Play it on easy because there's a lot more ammo in it. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. The um that that trap bolt reminds me of a, a weapon that me and Steel love from um, Syndicate Wars called the Trigger Wire, where you basically you could just set up a line and that line would kind of shimmer and nothing could see it and if they walked through it, it blew up. So you, we quickly found that you could just lay loads of tiny little strips of it because you didn't have to hook it to things. You didn't have to trace it from one wall to another. You could just you just suspend it in midair. So you'd you you basically lay t- loads of tiny little bits of wire. And make this kind of spider's web, and then when things yeah. ran through it, they just blow up and it killed pretty much anything that ran through it. Was it fair though? Could you, if you were a no, no, a multiplayer game? It was not a multiplayer game, no. Uh, also, didn't and it was <laughs> it was kind of using the weapon at, uh, not as it was intended to be used, because it became massively powerful, especially at loose save. You just put loads of little tiny dots of it down. You could basically create this huge minefield using very little resources from the weapon and hmm. nothing could withstand it. Because well, so we, we haven't got any footage for the trigger wire, but we have got f- yeah. footage for the Persuadatron, which I'm showing well, at the moment for Syndicate Wars. The, uh, the Persuadatron actually kind of allowed another little uh, bug to be abused, <laughs> which is uh, the Persuadatron basically walk around it and it convinced people just to follow you and like join your cause. Well, whenever you killed an enemy, Whoever these members of you know the, um, uh, the general public were follow would pick up that weapon. What you could do though is you could fit about fifty thousand people into one vehicle because <laughs> of bug in the game, which meant that all you had to do was drive around in a vehicle, and as soon as you got within range of an enemy, everyone <laughs> within your vehicle fired at once. <laughs> nice. So it was just Same Armageddon. <laughs> It's like a blah. There was there's a there's a sniper rifle called the LR rifle, which I think stands for long range rifle. But you could end up with like a vehicle full of people with LR rifles, and it would make the sound basically clip it. It it, it just spaz out the sound. It just go, <laughs> and you just see an enemy turn instantly into a pool of blood. I have definitely played this before. Definitely when I'm looking at it, it's just it's a long time since I have. It's proper isometric, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is a fantastic game. There's no perspective in this at all. It's all ISO. Mm. At least you can rotate, though. Rotate yeah, the yes. camera around. It was actually pretty good in that respect, and it uh, walls would go see through when they were in mm. front of whatever you were controlling and stuff as well. I've actually got, the, I've got a disc behind me with it on, actually, I think, somewhere. Yeah, I've got, I've got an original disc. It looks familiar, that game. I, I didn't even play a demo with it back in the day. It looks very familiar. Yeah. Right. How about we move on to something else? So, on, yeah. to, on to another one. Um, 
I'm just looking through. One thing that we haven't covered yet, um, and it's qu quite a favourite of mine, is is weapons with trajectories. I'm really a big oh, fan of grenades. Yeah, you, 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 you and your fucking grenades in Quake. <laughs> Honestly, my lot. Honestly, hand grenades as well. Not the grenade launcher. If he had a grenade launcher, the he he he, he wouldn't use the grenade. He'd just run around going dick 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 dick. There's 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 a reason what? for that, and that's it's psychological. It's basically terrorizing people because it made the really loud ticking noise. You knew someone was chasing you with this hand grenade. It was the most powerful explosive in the game as well. It was more damaging than the grenades or the rocket launcher. Yeah. So you just run around with this grenade in your hand, and people would just run away from you or do stupid things and die. <laughs> yeah, panic at the last minute it, and jump yeah, off the edge of the ledge. Yeah, it was literally just a, a, a psychological weapon. But, but, but I, like, I think there's something really... It, it's probably just me, I guess, but I love the idea of um, of weapons that, that can banter on corners. That you can lit, you can like what you were talking about with the rocket launcher earlier. You can basically run through a doorway, fire a rocket launcher at the doorway, and it lands in the doorway. And then when someone follows you through that doorway, they get hit by the exploding grenade. I love stuff like that. I love where you can improvise with weapons. Unfortunately, we haven't got Quake Two footage with the grenades, but we have got Halo footage. We've got the plasma <clears> grenades, which <throat> I think we've all, all us, put down. I think all four of us put plasma grenades down. I'm yeah. not a fan of Halo in general, and I'll say that as a disclaimer before we start talking about it. Um, I'm not going to explain why. I'll talk, tell you that some other time. But the grenades were fun. Um, mm. It was, it was cool that you could stick some on someone, and then especially if you were playing like the single player. The single player game, the enemies would go, huh, huh, and then start running off. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! And then they'd blow up. And, you know, there was no way out of it on multiplayer. You were stuck on it with a grenade. You might as well run towards the enemy, like your yeah. enemy. And and yeah. that was a fun. It was a fun as, like, you've got a few seconds of knowing that you're going to be dead. <laughs> it's there, like... there, there was a lot of really interesting, very subtle mechanics with the grenades in the Halo series. Like, the grenades would explode on the floor if they were blown up. So you could end up actually throwing a grenade and there was already a load of grenades scattered around on the floor and blowing the entire, <laughs> blow yeah. entire map up yeah, yeah. with a chain reaction yeah, or yeah. you could you could throw a grenade and then if you threw another grenade and it, it the other grenade that you, the first grenade you threw exploded it would knock that other grenade up into the sky at an angle right. so you could use explosions to knock grenades off in different directions well grenades were also good for things like the warthog tricks and you know setting yeah. up tricks etc and yeah. making sure that you I've spent so many misspent hours trying to get war dogs up on the like over the top of the big uh, the, the big sort of uh, rock bridges on silent cartographer. Great fun. So which one's the silent cartographer one? I know the, it's the um, most the, famous. The cir oh, cir the circular island. map. Yeah, it's the big it's circular big... island. Oh, is right, it the yeah, biggest yeah. one in Halo One? Is that the biggest map in Halo One? It's nowhere near the biggest map. It's quite a small map actually. In Halo um, One, is it? Yeah, it's the original Halo. Like it's just a big circular island with a beach on all sides of it, uh, and it's got oh, like right. it's got it's got like these big arches, these big stone arches in it, um, and you, you basically a lot of the warthog trick jumping back then was trying to get it over the arch or on top of the arch. I've just shown uh, a vid another video of um, of Halo where there's a you know that I think I just showed you this before the show, Lou, where the, the the grenade falls down, goes down like into a vent area, gets pushed back up by the air. Trajectories back on itself and then lands on somebody and sticks to them. Oh yeah, absolute brilliant. Just, You'll get it in a few yeah, seconds. Yeah, that is such a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I I I do like that. I do like the. I mean, the only thing that frustrated me was your skill with it. I think that the hand grenades because it wasn't just in Quake Two they didn't stick to you. You had to be you had to be close and you had to avoid people's weapons while you were cooking the grenade, running around back and forth and then you'd throw it and it explode in mid-air hopefully if you were good enough at it. We actually went to the point, and again I don't know if Lou did this I say we, I did this um, uh, we edited the pack files in Quake 2 so we could have timers on the, the grenades, yeah. so it would go tick, 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 tick and then, that was my timer that you were using. Well, whatever, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, my pack files were made up from everybody in the community's pack files, just kind of jammed together and making it making the game feel better for me but it's probably cheating these days definitely cheating in competitive gameplay having bright bright orange skins and things like that is but the grenade, grenades and I mean I think people have mentioned um, in the list stuff like the pipe bombs from Duke Nukem yep they're grenades I guess but they're very interesting grenades and um, and I guess in a certain way the trip mines are kind of well they're not grenades really are they but they, they, you use them kind of like grenades and you'd normally what you'd do is you'd set up pipe bombs and uh, trip mines. 
like there's a cupboard on one of the levels where you'd open the doors put a load of pipe bombs in there, put a trip mine in, close the door, and the door would close just as the mine activated, so if someone opened the doors, they'd get a face full of explosion. I, I remember playing that with you at the uh, last LAN party, I think it was, and I just got owned. You guys just kicked the crap out of me. I mean, I, I think I won one game, amazingly. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, it's it, it's one of those... Again, pipe bombs, they're, they're not just grenades, though, are they? They're, you throw them and then you set them off. And then you set them off, yeah, and you can throw lots of them and then set them all off at once. But yeah. you can also throw them and people can pick them up, so you've got to be careful. Oh, uh, right. Unfortunately, the trip, uh, we don't have don't have an example of the trip wire anywhere. But I do have an example of Duke Nukem pissing in a toilet. And shooting some strippers. What else is he going to do in a toilet? Well, oh, he picks, uh, in Duke Nukem Forever, he picks crap up. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he did, he, you can make Classic him do that. Yeah, yeah. But well, you can also make him draw a pink cock on the... Um, on the, the whiteboard, which everybody did. Everybody did. Don't care who you are. <laughs> and the game yeah, probably forced, the forced you into that sort of thing, didn't it? Yeah. Pretty much. That's kind of sensibility. Um, there was one other thing on here that I, I say one other thing. There was another, uh, uh, another brilliant weapon. And I might even put it up there in my top five, I'm going to say. And, and it's a bit of an odd one. Uh, let me try and find it first before I... Uh, do, do, do. You can keep talking if you want. Well, we we wait to see what oh, you're yeah. going to talk it's about. It's it's <laughs> it's called Blitzkrieg, and it's from uh, Dead Rising, Dead Rising Two specifically, uh, and it's 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 a machine gun or two machine guns that are attached to a uh, wheelchair, an electric <laughs> wheelchair. Because you may, you obviously in, in Dead Rising you craft weapons. And what you have to do first is crap, uh, crap, is craft a, uh, I'll try and get rid of that. I don't know why I found that funny. Um, yeah, so you craft, you craft this electric wheelchair, which is basically a, a wheelchair that has a battery attached to it. I can't even remember what it does. I think you, th I think you can throw a zombie into it and the zombie gets electrified. Or something like I can't remember now. I can't remember what you use it for. Anyway, after you've made the electric wheelchair, you can make this this Blitzkrieg thing. It's one of the best things in the game. I think it's coming up soon. Actually, what the hell? It's like two minutes in. So you find the uh, the Blitzkrieg. Ah, right, here we go. He's making it now. Sorry, I thought I had the right um, the right time thing there. That looks so, crazy. Yeah, he makes this. Uh, he makes this machine gun. <laughs> oh, there's three machine guns on it. You only need one machine gun to craft it, by the way. I don't know why there's three machine guns on it. Um, why not? And, and, and literally, he just he just goes out into hordes of zombies <laughs> and just fucking mows them all down. But there's also, in this game as well, the weapons are pretty genius. <laughs> one of them... One of them is... <laughs> That's mental. One of the, one of the weapons is, um, is a lawnmower, and you just mow over loads of zombies. It's absolutely genius. <laughs> anyway, you see the general idea. Dead Rising 2, as as far as uh, the Dead Rising series goes, I mean, there's only two of them so far, but uh, third's coming out really? soon, I think. This third's third's already out, mate. Is it out now? Right, I haven't played it yet. Dead Rising 2 was miles better than Dead Rising 1, put it that way in my eyes. It was... Um, uh, the, the, the crafting was better, and the, um, the, the, the mission format was a lot better as well, because in the first one... You, you've missed loads of missions out all the time. You had to miss a, lo miss a load of missions out, and I didn't like the way that it worked, and the second one gave you a lot more time and choice choices to make. Anyway. I always yeah. wondered what the point was in those games, of even having the time limit. I don't really get what it adds to things. Well, it's it's to it's to say that the military are at coming in eight hours. In eight hours, the you know th certain things that you do kind of kick off different events in the game. And then if you miss some, if you're at the other side of the map and you've only got two hours to do that that mission and then run to another one, you can't do the other one because it's finished. But by, by the time you mm. get there, I know what you mean, but it's just the way they decided to do Dead Rising. Yeah, no. it's just a different way, isn't it? A different mechanic. Yeah. So what's your, your favourite random weapon from a game? Just something that's completely out there and bizarre as, you know, crazy, left field. Ah, it's an interesting Ooh. one, that. It's like I picking remember the one from, uh, I think, I can't remember if it was PC or PlayStation, but it was a game called Armed and Dangerous. Um, it was made by Shiny uh, before they kind of disbanded. 
uh, and it's called the Land Shark Gun. I think uh, there's a video on my list. Yes. Um, and what Land is it? Shark. It's a launcher that fires a shark. You just see a fin <laughs> go through the ground. What? And this big shark comes up and just eats whoever's uh, in the in the <laughs> path. But Shiny always had a good sense of humour with that type of thing. I don't think it was actually Planet Moon Studios, apparently. Planet Moon uh, Studios. Never heard of them. It was definitely uh, involved with some of the people that used to be X Shiny. Yeah. <laughs> it actually is just that, isn't it? <laughs> Or, um, is Shiny the guys that made Earthworm Jim? Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right MDK. up the right street, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they made MDK as well. Whilst we're talking about weapons, yeah, Earthworm Jim's worm body as a whip, that was pretty good. Yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. a video of that on there as well. Um, I love that. I actually really liked just the, the standard um, gun that he had. Blaster. Yeah, 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 that was great. It was it had cool. a great that's sound a to it game. again. God, we've played a lot of games, haven't we? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's mint. I just saw that shark thing. That's really good. <laughs> I can't remember what platform it was on. This is this must be an updated Earthworm Jim. It looks way too good for the Mega Drive and SNES. Yeah, I think it's. Um, it, it's an HD sort of re-release that you can download. I got it on the PlayStation Network and played through it. And it was good yeah. fun. Yeah, it was very difficult to find um, to find original footage of this type of thing. Mm. <laughs> it was. Flinging him uh, himself at any object. I love it. I loved it. It was brilliant. Uh, it found it very, very hard, but I did love the game. I loved the comedy in it as well. At the, at the particular age I was, it was quite difficult to control in places as well. I oh remember. yeah, yeah. He just struggled to get on a platform seven times then yeah. on this one. Thinking about um, like left field weapons, um, an obvious one that I've got in my list is the shrink ray from Duke Nukem. Yeah. Yeah. Because basically, you fight at an enemy, the enemy would shrink down, and then you walk up and stamp on them. You could and, also uh, fire it yourself in a mirror as well. You could, yeah. <laughs> was, so there were certain parts in certain levels where you, there was like a tiny little doorway, like a, where mice and stuff could go through. So you'd fire it at a mirror, it'd hit yourself, and then you'd run through. But you had to be quick because the effect wore off after about five or ten seconds. If you if you start growing in the middle of this tiny little hole, you just splat. Mm. Wasn't it the intention that you stood you stood on people? Yeah, basically. You just fire at people. You can see in the video now, you, you fire at something and then stamp <coughs> on it. Uh, this looks like a quite updated version of Duke Nukem. Is that, it there? Look, it's, um, Megaton might, edition. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Dual yeah. wielding as well. You couldn't dual wield in Duke Nukem, could you, originally? No, you, but you had a mighty boot. Um, you had a, basically a, a melee attack that you could always access. Funny thing about that, though, is that was... you actually had a weapon, <laughs> which was a boot as well, which is your other foot. So you, oh, could, yeah, yeah, you yeah. could actually okay. fire your foot and fire your, your mighty boot at the same time, and both your legs would come out the bottom of the screen. Yeah, and you'd just be <laughs> suspended in air, sh kicking. Yeah. Just kicking like this. <laughs> just to go in down fact, onto like a Russian. When I ever play Duke Nukem with you guys, that's basically what I do. I just run around the level, just, just Pretending to fly around, but uh, what does it? What does the external animation look like? Does it look like just, you... he, he just kicks with one foot? Oh bollocks! Rubbish. Um, and it, they didn't put all of the other weapons as well. Basically, when he when he was kicking, he'd kick, and otherwise he just had the generic looking weapon. And you could t do it so that the weapon he was holding was hover above his head, so you could see it. Because it wasn't a three D model, they'd have to do the animations with every single weapon in his hand, so they just didn't bother. Same as Doom. Do in Doom when someone punches you, they're basically shooting this crappy machine gun at you. Yeah. Right. So sorry, guys, if uh, anybody is watching the stream and uh, yeah, I don't know when it stopped. Unfortunately, we'll see that when we edit the videos together. But yeah, we've unfortunately we just lost Twitch entirely. I think the uh, the streams are all down by the looks of it. But anyway, um, to continue, where were we? The, the um, back to the round. Nice yeah, around, so I was yeah. just showing Nice Around just because it's it's one of those iconic ones and it does the most damage in the entire game for, for anything, but pretty much if you can see it. Is it a weapon right. or is it a summon? It's, it's a, a summon. summon. A but I, I, I also class magic as a weapon because you're still using it to attack people. I know it's not a yeah. physical thing, but. So can we can we class something like a, like powers in there? Like what about called the grass electricity powers from Infamous? That's weaponized powers? That uh, opens yeah. up a whole new thing. We've only got fifteen minutes left. <laughs> um, yeah, we can. Yeah, if you want, if you want to use that, I personally don't think they would be up there in my in the upper echelon of favourite weapons ever. I'm using that as an example. You know, something like you know the Force from very Star Wars games, or well, lightsabers as well. <laughs> yeah, well, while we're I was going to say while we're talking about Star Wars, why don't we mention lightsabers? Because 
It's the obvious one, isn't it? It is, yeah. And it's a unique. It's unique in the sense that it's a weapon that's been around a long time before the games, and people have always wanted to use them. So it's all, the onus has been on the games to get it right. And I did ask the question on Facebook: which game got it perfect, if any? No, none of them have got it perfect. None of them have got it perfect. But I would say that um, the Force Unleashed was pretty close. If you play the Force Unleashed on easy, yes. But if you play it on, because the problem we always have with lightsabers is, as by their nature. They're a super OP weapon because they cut through everything, apart from the, some energy reflector things that they use in episode three with those stupid staffs that those robots are waving around. Yeah. Um, basically, the only thing that can stop that is one of them or another lightsaber. So any robot, any living thing, you get hit with a lightsaber, it's going to cut through through you. That's what makes them so mm -hmm. cool. Kind of what makes them so bad as well, because in realistic terms... You know when you see those little the younglings training with the lightsabers? They yeah. would all be dead because they're five <laughs> years old. They go, what does this bit do? Dumb. Dead. Like, like, think, like you would kill yourself with a lightsaber before you could kill anybody else. I think really the lightsabers cut anything that's convenient to the plot. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's the substance that they cut through. Yeah, so that's I'm true. I'm trying to find a good lightsaber example, it's, it's quite difficult. Conceptually, though, they are an amazingly simple but brilliant weapon, aren't they, really? Mm. A laser yeah. sword that cuts through anything. I mean, how much more simple do you want? Yeah. It but gives yeah, them. It's... It gives them like a like like you say, it's like an extra level of danger, and that that if they touch anything, they will destroy it. Yeah. And so, yeah. They, but they can they can hit each other. So the the battle, like the stakes have just risen massively. Mm. If any part of that sword touches anything other than the other person's sword, then they're dead. The thing is with lightsabers, though, I always find is that they're just a massive frustration, because. Did you play Jedi? In, in a real world, it would open up so many opportunities. Like, okay, I'll just cut through this wall. I'll yeah. dig a hole here. I'll do this. But obviously, you can't because the game's quite linear and you have to follow a certain path. But they also do do that in certain places in those games. It's, yeah, in very select places where you've got like a clearly marked wall saying "cut here," you yeah. can get through them. <laughs> but you can't vary from the, the you know the path the story wants you to take too much. Yeah. No, it's. Um, I think yeah. the. Uh, in terms of there's there's a lot of other games that have had lightsabers in as well, um, obviously, but a lot of them uh, historically as well, a lot of them haven't let you play as a Jedi. The first yeah. Battlefront, that was like you were playing a Star Wars game and you were a foot soldier, uh, uh, and it's like what really? What, the, what, what, what? Why? Why can't I play? A Jedi? Anyway, they introduced it in Battlefield um, Battlefront Two. And it was amazing. I think it was really well done as well because it was only a limited time that anybody could be a Jedi. And you, while you were that Jedi, you could get shot, don't get me wrong, but you had to be like facing people to deflect things. And it was hard to be... Everyone nailed you as soon as you became a Jedi. Everyone jumped on you on the server. But it was still really well implemented, I thought. It was, um, it was, a, it was a great game in my eyes. Um, sorry, I'm still watching the footage. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do like Star Wars. It's it's a certain it's the kind of thing that's difficult to get right in a game. The same reason that uh, there's never been a really good Superman game because how do you make that into a game without totally killing the? You've got a limit somehow, haven't you? Yeah, you, you've got to put the you can die. Your enemies will overpower you. Um, element into the game, whereas yeah, a lightsaber both figuratively and literally cuts through that issue, doesn't it? Really, <laughs> that's what it's designed to do. Yeah. yeah, that's why they're so iconic in the films. It's kind of and let's not get into a thing, but that's kind of what makes them so cool in the original films over yeah. the prequels is that how sparingly they're used and how when one comes out, you're like, this is serious times. Yeah, it's, shit's it going now. They're not. They're not brandished lightly. You know, they're not. You don't just wave wave it around all the time when you're walking down the road. Do you know what Unless I mean? you're in the cantina and you just want to chop someone's hand off. Quickly, but he put it away again straight away afterwards, <laughs> didn't he? You know, he was using it for a very specific purpose. Moving from a very uh, serious weapon onto an utterly ridiculous weapon um, is—I'm uh, showing a video for it now. It is the weapon is a huge dildo. Do you know what I'm talking about to this, start off this, with? Is this from San Andreas. Saints Row. No Saints Row. Oh, you can uh, do it. Oh, San Andreas has it as well, doesn't it? The black one. It's. Uh, and I believe that was before Saints Row, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Saints Row the third. This no, anyway. it, was a, it was a pink one in, in San Andreas, I think, mate. A big, oh, big oh, double ender. I'm sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. This is called the Penetrator. This, was... 
This is called the Penetrator, and it's like a three or four foot long dildo that looks like like it's on a baseball bat hand, um, handle, and he's he's currently beating a lot of cops up on my screen, and uh, yeah. Sam, it's... Sam, for a brief moment there, I thought you were going to raise like a picture of it or something. I was going to say, it ain't a picture. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know the I always feel sorry for the guy. You know, if you get beaten to death by a three-foot dildo, <laughs> that appears. If that appears in your obituary, you know. <laughs> Here lies Sam, beaten to death by a four-foot black rib nobbler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, I, he's doing. He's doing a survival thing, and oh, he's just beating someone on the floor to death with a dildo. It's brilliant. I love it. I love it. Staying on the uh, the same throw one. Yeah. Did you ever see the um? Oh, the uh, the dubstep gun. No, but um, I did see your note on it. Let's have a look at it. It's not a fantastic video, I'll warn you, because, it, again, it was quite difficult to find it, but it does show off at, where we're basically, uh, you run out there with a the gun, and it just, just starts playing um, dubstep, and everyone, cars, you know, just start dancing to this music. Right, let's, I'll, I'll put the sound on for this, then, and see what this, uh, this is like. Spamming it, and I will definitely keep uploading. And there's someone talking over it, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I told you it wasn't very good video. But it's entertaining. It's one of those ones where it's entertaining for the first like five minutes you what use it. You this? think actually this hasn't really got much practical How use. Hard does it go? <laughs> well, it's just a YouTube it's like Skrillex as a weapon. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so the, the obvious, uh, the obvious downside to a dubstep gun is that whilst you're using it, you have to listen to dubstep. <laughs> so, you know, cool. Oh, if, we, if we're going to do the Limp Biscuit thing, now I'm going to do the dubstep thing, mate. All right. Oh, do, you like dub, do you like dubstep, Lou? I do, yeah. yeah I, I quite like I it, I'll be honest. I, would, I don't hate it, put it that way. Sam, you're on your own. I don't, I don't hate it, but I wouldn't ever listen to it out of choice, let's put it that way. <laughs> I know, some of the Skrillex stuff, it's... Uh, it's a bit metally and you know that's as dubstep, is, dubstep isn't a game weapon apart from that gun come on um, guys yeah good call <laughs> yeah so well we got chance for another one do you think because i was going to suggest worms well yeah let's yeah. let's just show some worms footage because i've got i've got some here um while we do while we're showing some everyone knows worms we don't really need to talk about it you know once we show whilst we're showing this let's move on to the last few um the last few bits that I want I had in the subject uh, in the main subject area right so I wanted to talk about tropes before we, we finish off so m more specifically tropes than we've already talked about we've got loads of other weapons that we wanted to talk about but this you know we've only got two hours at the end of the day a quick opinion about weapon tropes in Mass Effect do you prefer the ammo system in the first game or the second game I can't remember what's the difference is. The ammo system in the first game is you had unlimited ammo, but your weapon heated up, so you could only fire yeah. it until the point where discharging. And you got after you got like my um, like heat sinks for it, but essentially you had infinite ammo. And the second one, you collected ammo. I distinctly remember preferring the second game in general, but I don't know if that was the weapon or or anything. I mean, I remember that um, it's like it's like playing through um, totally different games, but it's like playing through Rainbow Six. The first game was great, but the controls just improved the more games that they did. They really, really refined how to how to play, and I felt the same way about that. Um, to answer your question, I would yeah, I would say I agree with Chris that the second game is better overall. But yeah. Conceptually, I liked that idea more in the first one, uh, and how they explained it as well, because it wasn't just the how it was implemented mechanically, but it was part of the codex and how that yeah. technology was a part of that that galaxy. Yeah, it, the same with everything, even the ships worked on the same principle that you could only yes. use full power for a certain amount of time until you were to cool or vent something out. And I, 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 I did like that concept. I liked it a lot actually. It was, um, it made it, it made the, your tactical uh, choices in combat slightly different than what they were in the second game. Yeah. Consequently, the second game's combat was a hell of a lot faster. But you would run out if you didn't have enough heat clips for a certain weapon, you would run out of it. Um, which was not a problem in the first game, but you might have to let it cool down and change, you know. I said, yeah, in the second game, you had to get clips that absorb the heat and then got expended, didn't you? Yeah, that was. there were heat clips, but there were heat clips for a certain weapon, I believe. Yeah, I could be wrong about that, or if there were heat clips, uh, do you know what? It's been awesome to play it. It's been a well, very I think long you could, if you take out a rocket launcher, you know, and then you use your heat clips for that, you could then switch to your rifle 
but it wasn't the same heat clips, I don't think, so you could run out of ammo, basically. Which is kind of, if you think about it, that's just them going back on their original concept. Yeah. Because they're basically giving the weapons ammo when they said they didn't in the first one. I preferred the uh, the system in the first one a lot more, but I agree that the second game was a lot more engaging. Yeah. And I, do, I, I did enjoy the story a lot more. It, 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 was just, it, was, it was pacier as a game, though, wasn't it? There was less of the Mako bits, which I actually quite liked, but there was too much of them. Um, mm. Yeah, it was just uh, slick, more slick. Oh, I've just clicked something by accident and everything's gone wrong. Um, oh. He killed us. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I'm just so showing some uh, Mass Effect 2 footage for the M920 Kane heavy weapon. That is awesome. Yeah, I like that. That See, just destroys things. That's a bit of a super weapon, but I think you can get away with it in games like Mass Effect where the multiplayer isn't why you play it, you know? Mm. Was yeah. there a multiplayer Mass Effect 2? I think there was two, remember- two onwards, yeah. I thought it was just in three, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so we've talked. We just talked about overheating weapons as a general thing, um, as a trope. What What do you guys reckon? In I mean, is, does it depend on the game though? Depends on what you what you prefer. Like I if, couldn't expect it in most modern games. If you've got something that's really powerful, then if you just got sustained fire, it seems a little bit like cheating. Yeah. So when you pick up something like um, you, you uh, when you're playing Wolfenstein. Um, new order, and you go to the machine gun, for example, on the on the turret. You pull it off. Now, would you prefer having a regenerating magazine, or would you prefer having a defined amount of bullets, like it is? Well, that's the same in quite a lot of games where you can detach the turret. You've got infinite ammo when it's attached, and then as soon as you take it off, then yeah, you've yeah. got a limited amount of ammo. I think that works quite well because, like, the turrets themselves in games are immensely powerful in most games, anyway. Um, and if you could carry that type of thing around with you, then it just make it too easy. But they also make you I really, agree. really slow and, and restrict the additional movement. firepower. Yeah. But then it's a case of when you just take it with you, you go a little way with it, just decimate everything in your path, and then once it's burned out, you chuck it away and move faster. I'm tra- I, I quite like that as a system. I think that's a nice yeah. trope that I actually quite like. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a weapon that overheats, oh, sorry, overheats or has infinite ammo. That you just need to wait until it regenerates. That is a bad thing. I mean, I can't think of anything that uh, off the top of my head. They, they usually compensate by making them really powerful, which is fine. Yeah. And there's this, there's a weapon. There's the some of the fixed guns in uh, Left 4 Dead, which look like they're overheating and they, they glow red, but they never stop firing. But they make you think like they, they are going to break, so you do kind of ease off on them a bit. Right. That's interesting. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Is that, so is that the game? Sorry, go on, Sam. I was going to say about what Lou said. Is that you think that's just them playing psychological games with here? I think They're it sort is. Of saying, everyone knows this weapons overheating trope that we do. <laughs> let's let's look like we're going to do that and yeah. make them stop firing, even though it won't actually have any effect. That's interesting. Yeah, I did the game. The, 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 the gun glows cherry red, and you think, shit, I better stop firing this. But you can actually keep firing it forever, and it won't overheat. That's interesting. It just glows red. It's inter- it is it is very interesting. When you watch people playing it, they all play it like they're expecting that to happen. Like they expect it to break, and it never does. Hmm. It's re- it is it only, it obviously only works once. Once you know that it doesn't do that, then it doesn't work anymore. But it's still interesting. So related to, like, wep- I suppose that's the ammo durability, isn't it? What about actual weapon durability and weapons that break? Oh, I'm, God, no, I'm no. Talking about, Fallout 3. Uh, well, I was just going to say, I'm talking about specifically about Fallout 3 and games like Dead Rising, where each weapon you have has a certain durability, and you, you know after, after that it's broken and you have to recreate it. I hate that mechanic. It annoys me because it's so ridiculous and realistic. So you get a shotgun in Fallout 3, and you fire it about ten times, and it's it's broken, and you're like, right, I'm pretty sure you can fire a real shotgun more than <laughs> ten times without yeah, it breaking. But the, the point I is, is that it's irradiated, it's post-apocalyptic, yeah. I do get all that, but it it's still <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I don't I don't like that kind of bookkeeping in games. I don't like the fact that I've got to keep checking my menu to see that my shotguns are 48% um, durability. Dead right. Island does it as well, because you craft weapons in that. And then if you, if you upgrade them to a certain point, they last for ages, but before that, they're it's like a couple of hits and they're fucked. It's like it's a baseball bat. I know I'm hitting zombies around the head pretty hard with it, but is that gonna, you know, is that actually gonna destroy it? I don't know. Well, it makes sense more with it. Am I take? Am I contradicting myself? It seems to make more sense with melee weapons, to me logically. If you smack 
something that's wearing armor with a sword repeatedly, you're going to blunt and damage that sword. Wear and tear, you know? mate. Wear and tear, mate. Wear and tear. I know. <laughs> wear and tear is your motto for life. It is. <laughs> um, that actually, from anyone again who cares, that actually comes from back when I used to run a recording studio. Sam picked up one of my really expensive microphones and started doing that with the fuck the fucking handle on it, um, the the mount on it. And I said, "Mate, you're gonna break it." And he went, "It's meant to move. It's a, it's a it's a hinge." And I went, "No, it's meant to fucking stay still because it's a grip, wear and tear." And ever since then, everything is wear and tear. But anyway. Wear and tear. Uh, true story. True story. True story. <laughs> uh, it's actually, actually, you know what? It was this microphone. It was this because he was doing that with it. Stop well, doing that. You're going to wear it. I'm just going to say. Break it. <laughs> um, in that, uh, that Fire Emblem I've been playing on the 3DS, um, the weapons in there, you only get so many uses. Yeah. Uh, which isn't so bad in itself because um, if, if you're planning an attack, you can say, oh, yes, I've got seven hits left on that sword. But the, um, the point becomes really annoying is that when you counter attack, and you can string together several counter attacks in one. You can find yourself just completely going through your weapons like you know, there's no tomorrow. Yeah. And then you just have to. Uh, I it, find it frustrating. It can be bal- like it's balanced quite well in um, I would say the Elder Scrolls games. The weapon we- the weapons do wear out and need repairing in uh, Skyrim, don't they? Am I yeah, right? I think, I think they do. Is it- I did that. No. Do they? Is there not? Is there not weapon wear in those games? No, in a, uh, in Morrowind, I think there was. Um, if you enchant a weapon, you only get a certain amount of uses with the magic on it. But uh, I'm, I'm I'm positive. Sorry, in Skyrim. I'm, I'm going back to Souls games again. Sorry, the weapons have wear in that game, but it's gradual and it's not like you you want to keep an eye on it, but it's not every ten minutes. It's like. Every yeah. couple of hours, you might have to sort but of prepare does, it. Does anyone enjoy that aspect of a game though? Because games are supposed to be in enjoyment. I'm not a fan of any kind of wear and tear mechanic. I must admit. I mean, I live without it. I, I I don't see it being a benefit to it. I mean, games like Fallout Three, there are so many weapons lying around that it's okay. It's tolerable. It's the until ammo. You get, that's until the you get attached to one that you like, and you're like, oh, it's broken. Yeah, as long as I think, as long as as long as they allow it to the durability to reach zero and it not break, and then you can repair it, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Maybe, possibly, but if you've got loads of ammo, for, like say you've you've collected loads of machine gun ammo, all your machine guns are broken. You've only got shotguns. It's like I've got all this ammo, but I can't actually do anything with it, you know. But yeah, then again, yeah. that's up to you. It's your inventory management. You know, you need to take repair. I can't even remember how. Oh, you repair it with other weapons, don't you? In Fallout, yeah, you have to combine. You can buy two AK-47s and it makes a slightly not shitter AK-47. <laughs> it's oblivion. It's oblivion, and you have to use the hammer. Uh, you have to yes. use a hammer to, there you go. to yeah. repair your weapons. Yeah. And which Just meant basically, yeah. you, you, when you're walking around trying to loot dungeons, you've got like three, <laughs> 300 pounds worth of yeah. rare armors. Yeah. Back. You hear that sound effect, ding, 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 like 18 million times by the time you're done with that game. Yeah. <laughs> um, next trope then. Um, what about things like uh, your, your your knives, melee weapons, uh, crappy pistols as your backup? What do you think about that? Well, how 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 should they be dealt with? Are they are they good enough for games these days? Should we be doing more? Should we just give someone fists like Doom, for example? It depends on the game, and it depends what kind of game it is. So, it, it, if you want if you want to make it so the weapons make you more powerful, you should start off with a crap one. So that the later ones feel good, right? I mean, that's the idea behind that, isn't it? What about instead, um, like the enemies get more difficult? So where you might start off with a pistol, a pistol can kill any normal person, but then as you progress later on, they start getting body armor and stuff like that. Then you need to get a, a more powerful weapon to match the opponent. Hmm. That's the usual way it works, isn't it? Yeah. I'm thinking of realism here. Um, that's another thing with weapons as well. We have talked a lot about it, but realism in terms of I might have a I might have a, a a knife on me or my fists or or a knuckle duster or whatever you know to as a backup, but what happens when you what happens when you get? I suppose I'm going on to a different topic there. I'm trying not to move away from uh, from the <laughs> weapons stuff. I don't know. I I I think I I struggle with um with the backup weapons because I never use them after the first one or two shots. Like anything that I, I can't think of anything now where the backup weapon's been useful. 
Maybe Counter well, Strike or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. you always in that awful. You always get in that awful situation in games where you run out of all ammo and all you got left is to hit them with the the spade or the your fist or whatever that you start with. And that's a terrible place to be. In. It's not. I don't think it's a fun place to be in any sort of game that you you're literally back to your starting weapon. Resident Evil 4 handles its knife very well, especially given that in all the other Resident Evil games, the knife is absolutely awful. Resident Evil 4, it's with you all the time. It takes up no item space. And you can, you basically, you, you think you hold um, R1 to ready your gun and you hold L1 to ready your knife so you can use it all the time. So anytime you stagger an enemy, you can get a few knife hits in to save yourself some ammo. And it becomes this incredibly useful tool uh-huh. that you it's actually really, really good for boss fights as well. Like, and it's 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 a backup weapon that's always there. And it's actually implemented really well into that game. I think it's fine if it gives if it makes you if it makes you uh, it makes it a skillful weapon, like you say there. If it's a knife that you've really got to take a risk and get good at to use. If they're useless weapons, though, if the yeah. first like the blaster in Quake One, for example, I mean, it takes like six or hits to kill her. Yeah, yeah, anything like that. I, if they're <laughs> useless, what's the point in them? You know. Because you have to have something. Or are you saying, is it better just to have a fist? Is that what you're saying? Just yeah, I mean, if it's it, it, it's it's extra work for the developers, does it matter? Does it matter that it's an axe or a, you know, or a fist? I, I, I probably don't think that they put much thought to it. I think maybe they'll stick that in last as a. Maybe. Like we need some infinite ammo or weapon that they can use yeah. when they've got nothing else. I, I mean, suppose the, yeah, that is the infinite, but it's it's really yeah. weak. So that yeah. Are we talking about a situation whereby you've run out of all your main weapons and you need to fall back onto something? Yeah, that's you, usually... I, like, I, I prefer it in that case, then, when they allow you to use your actual spent weapon as a melee weapon. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because that, to me, is more realistic. It's like, I'm shooting the shotgun, it's run out of ammo, right? I'm going to use it as a golf club instead. Yeah. Yeah. What about... Uh, How many game? games let you do that, though? There's not that many. That's a, there that isn't like many at all. Yeah, Borderlands, Borderlands let you do it. Yeah, all the weapons, and some weapons actually have bayonets on them, so they do extra damage. Yeah. What about what about games? Um, I know we're talking about weapons, but what about games without weapons? What are they? I mean, it's again it entirely. That's, that's actually that sounds like a really weird. I know we're talking about games, but let's like, talk about like, not even a tenuous link. <laughs> that's just like not a link. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking. I was thinking more like, about. I was thinking more like, about if you took that. If you took that. Um, that start a weapon or that melee weapon away from him then there'd be no weapon there at all but what about the games where there are there's a specific example here that i can give you and it's um uh, silent hill where you run around i mean silent hill for us and memories i've played i haven't played the other ones i'll be honest um weird one to play though because it's on the wii and it's you know it's very different control system to to the other ones but those games they they set like a that you don't need weapons to get through it you have a flashlight um, and that's I, it I should point out that that's only Shattered Memories that's like that all the other Silent Hill games have guns and stuff yeah yeah I'm, I'm saying that there's there's a lot of, there's a, quite a few games like that I know I'm not, I'm not counting the exploration games things like that um, Alan Wake was one wasn't it uh, uh, it did have a... weapons but it, not did many I... yeah it definitely did have weapons but the weren't uh, your main weapon was the torch wasn't it when the dark things came out and yeah uh, like well, you just cause light in order to hurt them. Yeah, I I quite liked that. I didn't particularly like that game as a whole. I think it told a decent story, but I don't know. The gameplay felt a bit repetitive. Linear. Yeah, linear and repetitive. Um, there was a bit of overacting as well in the in the voice script. But yeah, generally, I, th- I thought it was quite a good game. That. Be gone, Val demons. Okay, so maybe we won't talk about games <laughs> without weapons. Sorry. Well, of course, the Tycoon hasn't got any weapons. Well, that doesn't yeah. count. No, we can't talk. There's a lot of good games. <laughs> Unless you weaponize a roller coaster and send people flying off it like some kind of euthanasia coaster. You used to be able to do that in Roller Coaster Tycoon, actually. If you set, uh, was it Roller Coaster Tycoon? I was, no, it was Theme Park. If you put too harsh a turn on your roller coaster, you could actually get them to fly out. Which meant if you built your roller coaster right next to the edge of the park, they'd fly out of the park and come back around and pay it to get in again. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky! Brilliant. <laughs> All right, one, one of uh, Lou's bugbears is flamethrowers. Yep. Go on, go on. They're just crap. Lay into They're them. crap in every game. I, the, the, what I like about weapons in games is when they, they, when it feels like when you pull a trigger, you cause an effect on the enemy, and that's normally to knock them over, knock them back, blow them up, whatever. But flamethrowers in games just seem to be you pointing at the enemy, and then some fire does the damage for you. And then sometimes I'll scream, but not yeah, always. Yeah, it's not satisfying. No, it's it's not. 
Maybe it's because it's not an impact weapon. Maybe what I like about weapons is when, when there's um, something physical hitting them. I know exactly um, what Sam's going to say now. Go on. What game I'm going to say? Uh, dead, uh, dead space. Uh, no, the flamethrower. That's not that much got. All right, sorry. I the, thought... la the Last of Us has a really good flamethrower that you get later, and when you hit something with it, they set on proper fire. But did the run around really going really good. Ah! Proper fire. <laughs> Uh, well, it depends if you shoot an infected or a human with it, because um, the infected don't really run around screaming, they do just set on fire. Well, they do go a bit mental, but they don't scream the same way a human does. Yeah. Um, but it's very, it feels it feels very cause and effect. It feels um, it feels like, yeah, I think, I think what you say about flamethrowers is that you basically see a fire effect appear on your gun, and there's not really a, there's a physicality to it. Yeah. The one in The Last of Us does feel very physical and, and real. Yeah, you're firing, you're firing particles, and you've got like a <laughs> noise usually, and that's about it. The uh, one th one flamethrower that I do actually like is the um, Far Cry Two flamethrower. I was going to say Far Cry Three. I haven't, I can't remember the Far Cry Three one that much. You could actually, actually, you could set fire to the jungle. The that was yeah, that was kind of spread around. That it? happened in Far Cry Two, ah, and right. that's why I liked it because you set fire to some of the some of the shrubberies around you or whatever, and. The, the the grass and it caught fire and then someone else caught fire and then it kept and then you, yeah. you could engulf yourself in fire by accident you know and I love that I love that immersion that 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 mechanic sounds good but the, the only I've never actually fired the uh, flamethrower yeah. in Far Cry Three but yeah uh, thinking about thinking about that kind of effect um, if you've ever set fire to something in Minecraft and watched the entire world that you've created burn <laughs> no. and never to return that's actually probably the best. Thing I've ever seen in terms of spreading fire, and yes, I've never seen um, that in a game. There's a bit in Far Cry 3. Uh, it's one of the story missions, I think, where you've, uh, you've got a battle against some some of the drug lords, and you actually go into a marijuana plantation with a yes. flamethrower and burn the whole place down and get off your yeah, head at the same I, time. I, yeah, I do. I, remember that. Which, I just thought that was a fantastic bit of the game. Which Grand Theft Auto San Andreas did first, unfortunately, because you do the yeah, exact same yeah. mission in San Andreas with the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Such a waste, isn't it? Such a waste. Um, I think we're running over time, eh, Chris? Yeah, we are a little bit, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll close the close the show up now. And uh, yeah, sorry for everyone who was watching and isn't watching anymore. We will put everything on YouTube. Not that it matters. And uh, I'm not even going to bother with my pimping and stuff because there's no one to pimp to, etc. Uh, and plus half the things that I was supposed to be doing are all cancelled now so um, one thing I will say on the show though before we close is that on Friday sorry we, we're going to kind of change up how uh, we do these shows these, this, Wednesday's going to stay the same on 6 at 6.30 um, on, on Wednesdays we're going to do the normal talk show but on Fridays we're going to try we're gonna, we, we can't do this every week but we're going to try to do a multiplayer uh, stream and then on Mondays we're going to do a single player stream is it the way around? No. Oh, okay. Most definitely not. Um, what we're going to do first of all, and we have done a bit of spamming on Twitter and uh, Facebook, is on this Monday coming up, as long as Sam is still available and has internet access because he's in the middle of moving house, uh, the uh, we, we're going to try and start playing through Metal Gear Solid 1. Just because we spuff about it so much. Um, yep. Me, Sam's going to I want you to get it all out of your system in that one it won't happen. period it won't happen. of time. So you can shut have the fuck up about noticed, it for the rest of the time. Have you noticed we haven't mentioned a single weapon from Metal Gear Solid? I know. Because it's... they're all crap. They're not. It's just not really about <laughs> don't weapons. Don't stay, just don't. <laughs> we should have a Metal Gear Solid episode, shouldn't we? That might oh. get it out. That might get it all out. Um, anyway, so yeah, on Monday, me and Sam are going to start uh, at six thirty. We're going to start playing through Metal Gear Solid One. We're going to play the entire series of games, which is going to be a long—not obviously not in one session. <laughs> it's going to be a very long series. Um, we'll try and do a condensed version at the end of the playthroughs uh, and edit them together and put them on YouTube for you. But um, Sam's going to provide commentary. I'm going to play, and that's that. On Friday, not maybe this Friday. Don't know. It depends. Um, me, Sam, and. No, no, not Sam. Me, Lou, and Stee are going to be. No, uh, no, not this week. No, well, away. oh, sorry. Okay, me and Lou may be playing Planet <laughs> Explorers. Stee would obviously join us as well if he wasn't uh, off bumming or whatever he does. It I might do be like Planet Explorers. It might be something else, but we will probably be playing something. On yeah, Planet. we'll we'll try. I mean, and again, we won't be able to do this every week, but we'll try our hardest to to keep it keep it up. Um, 
Obviously, all of the videos will be uploaded to YouTube, including the cooldown episodes that Lou is being very tardy with at the moment. <laughs> uh, it's only taken three weeks to do one of them, but we'll let him off because we've all got lives. And yeah, you can find Resonance Arcade on all the social media sites now. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, it's always forward slash Resonance Arcade. Bebo, MySpace. Bebo, MySpace. <laughs> and Nuke as well. It's another one Yo. that's coming up. Um, Emojly. Emojly, yeah, all, all of them. We haven't really. No, it's, it's basically YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Uh, obviously, anybody's videos that we've used in the uh, in the show so far, we'll try and get links on. Sorry if we miss you out. If we do, give us a shout and we'll put we'll put links on there. Not that you guys will probably watch us, but bugger it, we'll try. And um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we shall see you next week. See you later. Bye bye.